this is episode 450 something six five something uh, so yes welcome today we have on bowler bear so that should be exciting uh, Trisky 11 first in congratulations as usual you went absolutely nothing but it's still nice to be first isn't it so yeah once we start getting the, the flock in and then bowler will probably be late it'll probably be running on B time so I hope you all had a good weekend I, I forgot what day it is Monday isn't it so yeah I hope you all had a good weekend and nice plans for the week so Leo Bowler is here, give me one second. I never know which button it is. There's like four buttons and it's always the fourth one I press. Invite sent. And I think I just I don't know. We'll see. There we go. Hello, sir. Hey Stan, how you doing? You okay? Yeah. And yourself? I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying. I don't know what's happened to my camera. I've, either I've shrunk or I've put it in a different place. Hey, well, last so. time you couldn't in uh, who was that NATO? You couldn't even see him. Yeah, I couldn't even see him. So yeah. all I saw was I saw a green screen because I I just thought everyone saw that. So there was just a green screen at the bottom, and then it was just like flashing colours randomly. Yeah, I could see fine the whole time. Yeah, well, as soon as I put as soon as I posted it on um on Instagram, I could see him straight. That was the first time I'd ever seen him. Yeah, the uh, the the king's yeah. graveling your internet or your access. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's never done that before, but I've noticed a few things recently. Like the, when you're um, like just various websites and stuff when you're on, and it'll just you click something and then it, it's as if you have to click it twice. You know what I mean? As if it's like processing something. Or, I, I don't know. You've got the gravelly hands in it somewhere. Yeah, I have no idea what's happening with this, but never mind. So I um I hear you had a little crush fest thing going on in your neck of the woods. Oh, like um the like the uh no, there was one this weekend. Like I think there was the Midwest Bear Fest, and I think they have oh. that in like Michigan or something like that. And oh. I know you're a dirty Brit and you don't understand how it works over here, except for popping over well, to California every once that, in a while. Actually. It's because I'm I'm planning on going to Ireland in November, hopefully. Oh, all right. Um, I think it's the twenty seventh, so yeah, hopefully I'll be going over and put Scouse in my backpack because he's only like half a rogue and tall. So um, yeah, hopefully I was looking at flights before I was I was talking to Papa Jay and um, the the closest airport to where it is is called Shannon Airport. And the flight takes 11 hours from me. And it's, I, I don't know how far it is the crow flies, but it's like, it's not 11 hours flight. Because when I used to fly direct to LAX, it was 11 hours. Um, So the flight goes from Liverpool to Dublin, and then from Dublin back to Birmingham in England, stays there for eight hours, and then from Birmingham to Shannon Airport. So on, only an Irish airline would make that journey, I think. So why why would that be the case? I... I've no idea. It's quicker for me to drive to Birmingham than fly to Dublin and then fly back to Birmingham. Birmingham's like swim there in that amount of time. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's, but the Irish for you, Leo's in. He he'll, he knows all about it. He defends them to. Yeah, Leo's yeah. like, oh, that sounds pretty good. That's not very far at all. Eleven yeah. hours. It's only um. So they, you fall asleep on the plane and you can go through your pockets. I think. Yeah. Oh, my brother's here. What's up, Bob? Uh, yeah, Leo. Ho well, hopefully. Hopefully. So I, I expect to see you there because there's no excuse if I can make it. So yeah, it should be good. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Crush Fest looked amazing. Yeah, the uh, not not like the big festival, the one they just had you talking about? No, the the big one. Oh yeah, the big one was awesome, man. I know they just had another one. They've had that a few times, Midwest Bear Fest, but that's like, uh, I don't know, that's about the same amount of time from uh, that you were describing to get to Ireland for me, I think, but mm -hmm. um, a lot of my neck of the woods. But uh, 
Yeah, the one that uh, was down in southern Missouri was awesome, man. I mean, that's that's the one I think you should uh, figure out how to try to make next year stunt and uh, all you damn uh, dirty Irish people as well because it was it was amazing. It was uh, I don't know. It's hard it's hard to really describe because you know we all talk to each other all the time mm -hmm. in group chats and the speakeasy on hang with bears and you know we all got our little groups and people that we vibe with and you just kind of get to know people over the amount of time that we've all been involved in this but like actually to meet people in person uh oh know, yes well yeah you know them actually being real you know and you know they are and you go to the local meetups and stuff and mm -hmm. um it, but just to get everybody to get together and people coming from the west coast from the east coast and we got to meet titty and nighthawk who we talk to all the time and um mm -hmm. so many other bears out there that um are just crushers out there so it was it was awesome it just wasn't there wasn't enough time to really spend time with everybody to be honest i think what, what seems to be um it seems, it seems to be good that the people you meet are genuinely the people that you've been talking to for the last year two years whatever and i doubt that's the case in many kind of like internet friendship groups do you know what i mean no one's putting on like a false thing or anything you just as as you are that's exactly how it was is everybody was exactly who they claimed to be online mm -hmm. or you know so many other groups you'd get together and you're pretending to be something else or um you know whatever else it might be but everybody was so genuine online mm -hmm. and that translated to the real world and I, I mean i think that's part of what made it so electric it really is like meeting old friends for the first time because you already know yeah. these people and not just their online persona you know who these people actually are so mm -hmm. to spend a little bit more time with them and get to know them a little bit so it's still an honor like I got to I see Jackobat in here, Stolen Honor couldn't make it, but I got to uh, meet Jackobat. I got to meet NATO, but I, I didn't really get to spend any time with him, you know? So um, I got to say what's up to Jackobat and long enough for him to give me a bracelet. But beyond that, I didn't really get to spend too much time with too many people, but it was still awesome. I think that's the thing though. I mean, it, it, it's always like, you know, the first time is always the most awkward or whatever so the next time you you all get together and stuff it's any easier and easier and easier and then you, you start kind of like which is what's happened really you know that you'll have the bear meets and then it'll still branch out like it does on the internet like it does anywhere and you'll still have your friendship groups or whatever but you'll you know you'll you'll be in more contact with that group rather than this group or whatever yeah and it wasn't even like awkward or anything like there's not like mm -hmm. one conversation that i had that was you know mm -hmm. oh like oh you're a new person i don't know how to talk to you or whatever it was more just like there wasn't enough time. Like I can't even go through like, a, you know, the amount of people that I got to meet. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, but, you know, my family was with, with me and I got, you know, little ones. So I'm watching them and flying kites with them and helping them get their face painted like butterflies and unicorns and stuff. And um, so you kind of get to meet people here and there. And, um, but yeah, I'm going to see how we can work that out next year. So I can spend a little bit more time with everybody and uh, get to know some people a little bit better, but it was great. You need to um, you need to sort your vaccine requirements out because that's stopping the rest of us coming over and joining the party. Yeah, I mean, do you? I mean, you you know how it is over there better than I do. Obviously, I mean, is that is that something that's just going to be in place? Are they ever going to go away from that? Or, I mean, like, I thought it's, it's America that's doing it. Yeah. Because we we just can't get in. It's, you've got to be fully vaxxed, you've got to be fully everything. But, I mean, I go on holiday on Thursday, I'm going to Greece. Don't need anything, don't even need to do a test, don't need anything. Just but I think it's stuff. because, they, well, they rely on tourism in Greece, so I think it's, you know, the, the only chance they've got is to kind of, like, let everybody in. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, who knows where it's going to go, but, I mean, there was points where I think we all thought, you know, all, you know, all kinds of dystopian things were going to be happening, mm -hmm. you know, a year and a half ago or whatever it might be. So things seem to be lightening up, but I also see like this slow drip of them just not addressing things. And I mm -hmm. see that at my company as well, right? Like, you know, I, I work for a big, huge corporation and, um, and uh, some, you know, stores and stuff that are customer facing. And, uh, you know, and a lot of those people that work in the stores and stuff, you know, they had to do all kinds of crazy stuff and nobody ever had to uh, mandatory get any shots, but at home office they did. And right. the level one above me, um, they were all mandated to do it or they were going to get fired outside of a, you know, a random religious exemption. And I heard most of those were being mm -hmm. denied it as well. So, right. um, but they basically took away all the restrictions for everybody. 
and may, and it was, just, I don't know, over the last six months, everything kind of went away. Um, mm. so there's literally, abs- I don't, I can't think of one thing that's left. Like they just stopped paying people to be sick. So up yeah. until about three weeks ago, if you said, um, uh, you had the COVIDs, you'd get paid for five days and you'd be allowed mm-hmm. to be out. And then, um, you had to come back and stay away from everybody and everything else. So, I mean, people were just being like, Oh, <coughs> I got COVID, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, yeah. it was, co- it was constant. So they just stopped paying people to do that. And that was kind of like the last, uh, the last thing. Um, except for there's like still like uh, barriers up in between people. And I think that's just the labor. They're like, oh, I don't want to take those down. Everybody's mm-hmm. used to them. And um, we might have to put them back up again because cold and flu season is coming again. But, um, but for me, you think what do, what's up? Do you think they'll do it again? Do you think they'll lock everything down again? I don't know. Well, I mean, you. like, I think it would, I mean, I, to me, it'd be a waste of uh, all this, you know, energy and everything they got mm-hmm. done, you know, to not do it again. Why not? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, everybody, you know, the majority of people are on board with it and they want yeah. to divide, they want to divide us and they want to get us angry and what's up, Iron Man. And, um, you know, whatever they can do to push us into separate corners so that we'll point the finger at each other instead of pointing the finger at them, they'll do. So mm-hmm. the people that are, um, whether the people that have been against it from day one, and but, you know, also at the same time, don't necessarily handle life and all the psyops very well and the way you re- react to them. Because, you know, mm-hmm. you can know some shit, but it doesn't mean you're going to have a good life. Yeah, exactly. um, uh, to the to all the new people that you know whether you, they got the shots and they're just like oh this was a mistake or at least they don't care mm-hmm. anymore um, you know so I think they have more people at least visibly kind of more what you would describe in like our camp as far as just mm-hmm. being against all the nonsense um, and then everybody who was like virtue signaling around it and pointing at everybody and telling everybody you're gonna call grandma like they'd be happy to get back to that, right? Because they mm-hmm. lost all that nonsense. They lost their their power and their virtue and their righteousness. And so and it would be easier to make a bigger divide. I mean, as much as there was a divide before, it'd be easier to make a bigger divide right now. So, um, or coming up, you know, here as the weather changes and people start to uh, sneeze as they always have. But, so I don't know, they could. But I mean, every time I try to say they're going to do this or going to do that, like, you know, they always do something, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, there are, I mean, this is a, the joy of planning things 10 years in advance. You, know? you can always, like, you, you, yeah. the other people aren't going to predict it. Um, yeah, I think you're right with the, with the camps because I think pre-corona, no one even thought about anything like that. And so no one was in a camp. So that you kind of, like, you, you got in a camp during corona. So now everyone's in a camp, do you mean, whether it's sort of, having the jab and regretting it, having the jab and loving it, being against it completely or whatever, but there's maybe four or five separate camps that are well established now that didn't even exist before it. So yeah, if you if you if you did it now it would make a lot it would probably be a lot bigger socially than it would be or than it was before. Um I don't know. I I, I go back and forth on whether they're gonna do it again. Because I, I I kind of I don't know what the point of doing it again would be. Do you know what I mean? It's it's almost like a certainly not straight away. I can see him coming back to it in like ten years or something or five years, like they did with like foot and mouth disease or, or whatever. But I don't know if they'll do it straight away because it, if they've just given people back freedom, then to take it away again, the people feel like they've lost something. Do you know what I mean? Like it was before when it was kind of like. We'll give you a little bit of freedom and then take it away, and then a little bit of freedom. Whereas now, I mean, especially over here, it's com- it's completely kind of everything's open. No one mentions it. Everyone's forgot about it, it's as if it never happened, kind of thing. Um, so to go back to it again, but I don't know. People are retarded, aren't they? People are definitely retarded, and I mean, I can see them getting back. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be COVID. It could be what whatever. You know, and it's not mm-hmm. going to be some ridiculous monkey. Mon- they've gotten everybody so programmed they can pull whatever right like somebody mm-hmm. just said aliens in the chat right like i'm hoping they pull that i mean i'm so disappointed if they have been waiting for a fake alien years. squirt what's up i've been waiting for aliens for 40 years but... i know right like I mean, t- I mean who knows but i mean i think they use it more as a um as a support mechanism to the, everything else right like mm-hmm. oh well you know climate change and cyber nonsense and economic fall like 
Well, now also the COVID numbers are starting to tick up. Like I can see it. I can see them using it as like a support ne mechanism for their gravel versus mm -hmm. them being the main gravel um, as they try to roll out their larger agendas and carbon footprint and all this other nonsense. So that'd be my guess. But then it's also, hey, you know, it's a great graveler card you can pull out in a year or 10 mm -hmm. years and be like, yeah. oh, you know, oh, the goy aren't falling it for it anymore. Like, let's bring back the, the, the let's take away the flu again and let's give them mm -hmm. some uh, new scary disease. So, I don't know. It's, it's, um, I mean, I've said before about my mom and dad on it. That it took me about three months to kind of fully convince them at the start. I mean, they, they were just... Because they, they've always been kind of like, you know, don't trust the government, don't trust the police, don't trust any... You know, use your common sense and stuff. But then as soon as that hit, they were... They didn't want me in the house, and you know, do you know what I mean? Like they, they just kind of like yeah. it was as if they were erring on the side of caution, which I get because you know they're old now and they're not in the best of health and stuff. So, my mum's my mum worries about dying like every day, and my dad's worried about my mum. Do you know what I mean? So, like, if my, if my dad's thinking, well, what if it is real and she gets it, then it's going to be you know the end of it, probably. So, that I think that's his mindset, which I get, I understand. Um. But once I once I convinced them, I mean, they never, as far as I know, never wore masks. Never, they've certainly not been jabbed or anything. Um, and they they, they kind of laugh at it now because all their friends are, are getting literally testing themselves every day until they get a positive. Yeah. Um. But I was on the phone to them last night, and they've both got quite bad colds now. And I could tell just the, the way they're talking and stuff, and they're saying, "Well, you know, they say this thing's coming back," and so, and so as soon as they as soon as it kind of affects them, they're like fully on board with it. Yeah. Well, in whatever you give them an excuse, right? Like you said, they're mm -hmm. not in the best health, they're older, whatever it might be. So, I mean, that can be a reason why they're not feeling well versus, you know, just being old in general, let alone our mm -hmm. lifestyles and, you know, a lifetime of grappling our bodies and everything else. So, I mean, my, my mom is uh, like... <laughs> I'm not sure if my brother's still in here, but um, my mom's she's jabbed up and she, you know, and she went along the way the whole time. She's like uh, Fox News only is mm. like 24 hours a day. She's got Fox News on and she'll be like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll and she's she's uh, cool enough where she like uh, will listen to some of the things I have to say and, you know, won't call me the bad man or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And she'll be like, oh, that's interesting. And um but then if it's not on Fox News, it's not real. And she doesn't like fight with me about it or anything, but that's just kind of mm -hmm. how she is. Mm -hmm. And so I'll tell her something and, and she'll be like, oh, well, that's interesting. And then like, and she'd be like, yeah, but I don't know. And, you know, maybe I should just get the jab just because like my doctor said so and I trust mm -hmm. my doctor and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And I'm old and and everything else. And then, you know, and then it'll be like three months later, six months later, however long on Fox News. She'll be like, did you know that the, there's some side effects to the vaccine? And I'll be like, well, yeah, I told you that like, two years ago before mm -hmm. this stuff even came out she'd be like so whatever fox news is telling her to do she'll she'll go along with mm -hmm. um but you know she started getting a little hesitant about um about the boosters and everything else but i guarantee if she got sick and or you know if fox news started saying like oh you should probably go get your booster she'd want to go get her yeah. booster mm -hmm. and um or her second or tenth booster or whatever it might be if it was being told to her by you know tucker carlson or something like that yeah. But like she got sick recently and um, and she she said, she's like, oh, I'm so worried. And she knows like I've talked to her about like germ theory and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't pound her with it. Or anything. I'm just like, you know, this is kind of something to think about. Mm -hmm. And um, and she's like, oh, I tested. I'm really sick. And she's like, I was negative. And I was mm -hmm. and she's like, well, I'm going to test again tomorrow. And she's like, well, my doctor mm -hmm. told me to test and keep testing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, and I've tried to tell her and, you know, the, the best way and possible like if what it is and carry mullins and things like that and like what the pcr test is and and she basically tested until she was positive mm -hmm. and when i and she doesn't live around me and i was and i was talking on the phone and and she was almost like relieved that she had it she's like i finally mm -hmm. am positive you know and it wasn't like a good thing but that yeah. was like the tone of the conversation it was like mm -hmm. oh you know um and so it's really interesting what it's done to the psyche of people where they like, they want to have this thing, even though they don't yeah, know they want to have it, they, the they need it in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, it, it confirms something for them. Like I say, my, my mom's 
my best friend, I suppose. She she goes for dinner with her like once a week. Um, and she's she's never married this woman. She's like in her sixties, like traveled the world and all this, but you know, just is lonely. Um, and she's literally tests herself, tests herself, tests herself like five, six times a day until she gets a positive, and then phones one woman, and then she'll do, and then she'll choose, even when she's got a positive, she'll then do it the next day, and then the first six will show negative or whatever, and then she'll get a positive and she'll phone one woman. And then they'll cancel dinner, and do you know what I mean? It's as if like that's. It's almost as a, 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 like comfort to them. I don't. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it, but. Like Leo just said, it gave him PTSD, and it really did. It like mm. gave like a soft version of PTSD to like the whole mm. world in a way, and I think it's both sides too. You know, mm -hmm. I think you got the truthers and the oh, anti-vax, and I'm so based and all this other stuff being like, oh, I told you, but like the PTSD is almost like, well, what's coming next? Mm -hmm. and or not willing to admit that oh maybe you know it didn't kill everybody and maybe it's mm -hmm. a slow burn off and you know things are getting weird and you know i'll tell you like every week at my company and there's you know hundreds of thousands of people that work for my very large company but there's an announcement like every week oh billy died tommy's mm -hmm. got some weird you know blood yeah. cancer that didn't exist before mm -hmm. i've got a bunch of people that i know at work and a few people i know personally that have like heart problems Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, they're the first ones to be like, oh, you know, you got to get the jab, got to be mm -hmm. this. And it's, and I don't even bring it up to them. I mean, at work, I would never bring it up just because I just stay away from all of that with everybody. And they talk about everything with me. And I'm just like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. like whatever you want to do, like go for your, your next booster, you know, oh, I have to go to the, uh, the doctor because I've got this heart problem. And, you know, and then two weeks later, they're talking about like, oh, the new booster's out. I can't wait to go get it. And I'm like, you know. It's hard to buy it's your like phone much and... better now. Yeah, it's like a, it's like the the even more retarded version of queuing up at the Apple store for the latest iPhone. Like yeah. queuing up at the doctors for the latest job for the thoroughly retarded. Well, it's probably the same people. They'll go from the doctors to the Apple store. So, so if the you... um... yeah. go on. I was just saying, like I think this gave, you know, Ira like a good um you know, they knew this beforehand, which is why they did it in this way. But, you know, the proof has been it's already happened throughout the world. Like they have a good formula on how to scare people into camps and just scare people in general that like never existed on this global or global mm -hmm. level before. And so they can apply that same formula to the next thing. Right. Or to the next thing or whatever it might be. And the one thing about like Coronu is you know, they're all talking about in America, and I'm not sure, you know, it's like, oh, Civil War, like Tim Pool, like, oh, the left, we're going to fucking take him down. Mm -hmm. I was like, nobody is going to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, people aren't going to fight each other. Everybody's so soft and limp wristed, like, nobody could do anything. Um, but they uh, they got everybody into, like, these uh, these camps of, like, red and blue, and, you know, I hate Trump, I love Trump, and everything else. So there's, like, this division. But this brought everybody together. Like, I live in rural Missouri, and I'm surrounded by a bunch of boomers that, like, don't like the government and all have American flags and guns and shit. But mm -hmm. they all fell for a hook, line, and sinker, right? So mm -hmm. if they say, like, oh, the anti-vexers are the bad guys, you know, they'd come after us just like anybody mm -hmm. else, where normally it would be, like, this 50-50 split and where, oh, those are the bad guys. But you can really isolate the people that are a little bit more free-thinking with a mm -hmm. with a psyop that has to do with everybody's health and everybody can get behind and on board with. And you still see these camps of division where the right does the same thing it always does. It's not just as far left as everybody else is on CNN and all the social justice warriors. But they're just, I mean, they're, they're more leftist than people were five years ago, more than mm -hmm. Obama, basically. Yeah, I think the, um, it, politics has, has kind of come back into fashion, really, because, and, and Trump definitely was part of that because he, I mean, Obama started it because I think, I think kind of during Bush and Clinton and stuff, people kind of like, for all from the outside looking in, it seemed like people weren't overly fussed. The majority, you still have people who were, but the majority were kind of oh, okay, whatever. When Obama came in, that was like a, like the first kind of celebrity president, if you like, um, and then Trump, you know, the the same. So it it has it's it's kind of a like fashionable and, and and people know about it and stuff. It's the same in England. They, they did exactly the same with Boris Johnson. So they brought they brought in like a character because Boris Johnson and Trump are the same character. 
Um, so they just brought him in, and then you know he's he's kind of like a lovable fool, and look at all the stupid things he does, and it gives both sides an argument. So the you know the right are kind of like well, he's he's just a normal person. He's not a career politician. He's just a normal bloke, and he he's going to make mistakes. And the the left, are, you know, this person shouldn't be in power. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like it, it gives, but like, like Quantum says, it gives both sides a win. Um, but I definitely think that the because leading up to Corona, there was a there was like a wave of right wing politicians, like and, and some some of them like outsiders being elected all around the world. Um, and I think they were just put there to bring Corona in because if. If Clinton had won the election, if Hillary had won the election, the Patriots and the Boomers and stuff, half of them wouldn't have gone along with Corona. They wouldn't have had Hillary Clinton tell them to go and get vaccines and, and go and get whatever, put a mask on. Whereas if Trump does it, yeah, okay, well, he's our guy, so if, he's, if he tells me, then, yeah, I'll do it. And they did the same thing with Boris Johnson. They've done the same in Italy, France, whatever. They've put these like right-wing people in. Um just to convince the right wingers, because the left will do it anyway. The left will just do what they're, what they're told, but the the right won't be told by. And certainly, like someone like Hillary, I mean, the, the 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 proper Americans wouldn't mask up the kids because Hillary Clinton tells you to. No, and she's. I mean, she's so unlikable too, and not mm -hmm. just you know in this country. I mean, since she was first lady, nobody liked her. You know, people were rooting for the guy getting the BJ and blowing his load all over some blue dress because they hated his wife so much. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, one of the things that uh, the big thing that that Owen's done from a political explaining politics that's resonated with me the most is how much "quote unquote" leftist policy gets pushed and gets done under Republicans and how much leftists or, you know, how much right leaning politics gets done right now. Like it is really is mm -hmm. like, if you look at what, and it's not just like the example of Trump because, you know, people will, you know, normies would just say, Oh, well, you know, that's because of Corona. Like even my neighbor will be like, Oh, well, he had to print trillions of dollars because we all had the sniffles, you know, it's not his fault. He's just, you know, he's crushing mm -hmm. the deep state and stuff. Right. So, um, so, but how it just swings back and forth and how they swing it back and forth. And I've never seen, you know, I'm in my early forties and I've never seen a, um, and I was a political science major. So like I, I looked into mm -hmm. all of this, right? Like I was very interested in all of this. I mean, I had to step mm -hmm. away from politics for about a decade because I just got too invested in it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it just wasn't good for me personally in my relationships. And, um, and I ultimately found I didn't care as much as I thought I did. It was just I was grabbing onto something just like a, you know, like a, a sports team or something mm -hmm. with a little bit more passion behind it because of the this, that or the other thing. But um, like I've never seen a character like Trump like they and they built him and you look back and how they built him up and you mm -hmm. would think like, you know, in, in the in the grabbler rooms and, you know, the 1990s or in the early 2000s or whatever, saying like, OK, well, what do we need to do to get this guy ready? to be a president and be the, you know, be the Trojan horse, you wouldn't mm -hmm. think they'd be like, well, you know, make them bang porn stars and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and give them a, yeah, a yeah. TV show. Right. But like, it's such a, uh, it really represents who we are as a, as a country, especially, but I think as a Western culture, like where we mm -hmm. are, it's just like, it's the celebrity vibe and like we get on board with it and, you know, still to this day, like, you know, I, you know, I think we're all in this pattern a little bit, like where you get into, oh, well, what did that celebrity think and everything else, right? Like mm -hmm. what, and there's, and even if you don't care and all this other stuff, then why are we even pointing to it? Like, um, like pocket of the future, right? Like he does all those, uh, you know, celebrities dropping like flies. And the reason people can get on board with that is because they're celebrity, but like, what's that, what's, what's the difference between that guy or that crazy lady or mm -hmm. your neighbor? So there is still a celebrity aspect to us, even if you're based in a truther and all this other shit, you mm -hmm. know? So it's brilliant, you know, in a way. Like, I give it up to Ira. Like, he's a freaking evil little genius. Yeah, the, the celebrity thing's definitely true. Because, it, I mean, it, celebrities come in all shapes and sizes. It's not just the Kardashians. It's, I mean, it, it is your, your sports team or, or your, your politician or your favorite comedian or, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It, it, all of them have a... A sway over you that the the fella down the road doesn't. 
um, for no reason. Yeah, and we all know it's stupid. You know, we still kind of fall for it because I think we attach the whatever they're attached to. So you attach the the footballer to the sports team, and then the sports team to well, that's he's my guy, and it's he's representing us, and so obviously he's he's you know I have to follow him or whatever. Um, so you, they, they become kind of more than the sum of the parts, if you like. But yeah, it's it's definitely a, a celebrity culture. But yeah, you you wouldn't if you were making like an Ivan Drago kind of president in a in a lab, and you would you wouldn't make Trump. Do you know what I mean you wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't make a real estate agent who does whatever? Do you know what I mean? Or you wouldn't think, but that's but that's exactly what they made mm-hmm. because that's exactly who we are. You know, mm-hmm. so I think you know we we got what we deserved. Yeah. And like Jack about just said, it's idolatry. And I'm, I'm curious about your opinion on this. This is something I've been thinking about recently is um, like the death of the celebrity, right? Like they don't want mm-hmm. any living heroes, but it's mm-hmm. different when your living hero is, you know, a sports player or, you know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you love, you know, LeBron James or Kobe or mm-hmm. whatever those famous people that kick a soccer ball over in England do or whoever those people are um, or, or like Brad Pitt or all this other mm-hmm. shit, like the, the celebrity culture that we grew up with they're not really heroes. I mean, people might treat them like heroes mm-hmm. um, and people will, and they can move culture based on what they like and what they tweet and all this other stuff. But there seems to be like an intentional death of the, of that like fake idol and celebrity where they're, where they're just not like, there's no more Michael Jordans and Kobe's mm-hmm. there. There's no more Brad Pitt's and Julia Roberts coming up. Yeah. Like it's mm-hmm. really moved to this like extremely decentralized, like, like the Instagram model who's got the biggest tits and bounces around the most has the most hits versus, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it seems like an intentional move mm-hmm. away from that. And that was so powerful for so long. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they have to do it because of the nature of technology and they're just kind of, flowing with the way that technology is this is weird to say like but organically kind of formulated through their through their uh guidance um Mm -hmm. but it seems to be moving away from it i don't know what your your thoughts are yeah i mean i've i've had this discussion loads of times with with, um with my missus or my my lad and stuff that doesn't in, in any field it doesn't seem to be like the next generation coming so like you said with 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 um your basketball people, I don't know, um, LeBron, um, tennis with with Federer and Djokovic and Nadal. There's no like new one coming up. There's no new Formula One drivers particularly, and Formula One's been ruined anyway. Rally driving's been ruined. Touring cars have been ruined. Footballers, there's no one. The the game has changed so much that there's there's no one who you can even put in the same category. I mean, the the best two players in the world are still Messi and Ronaldo, and they're you know mid thirties, you know mid late thirties. They should be they, they peaked ten years ago, but there's no one to take the place. And it's the same like you said with actors with Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts and stuff. There's no like young, you know. There was a spell, wasn't there, like in the nineties and stuff, where, you, where there was just like they were just churning out actors, and these actors went on for the next. 30 years, you mean like Johnny Depp, DiCaprio, whoever. But yeah, there, there doesn't seem to be any any new ones, but I just think it's because there's no quality in anything. There's no, like, the, the there's no good films anymore. So there's no actors to be in these good films. You know what I mean? They're not memorable people, whereas you think of, like, films from the 90s or, or the 80s, the early 2000s or whatever, the, the films were that good that you you kind of remember the, the actor and then the actor then becomes... Fa- so it's kind of like a that is an organic thing, um, whereas now because they don't have the starting point, so they don't. No one's watching films anymore, new ones particularly. The songs aren't the same. The, the, I mean, no one. I know you you sort of take the mic because I want to watch the Eagles because you've got no musical taste, but the Eagles are are in the seventies now and they've sold out a stadium. And they've sold, they sold it out at Hyde Park. They sold out, I mean, Anfield holds like 60,000 or whatever. They sold it out. And they were charging like £200 a ticket. So there's no like, you know, Cardi B wouldn't do that. Or whoever, do you know I mean? And they wouldn't do it now. They're not going to do it 40 years after the latest hit. So there's just like, there's this desire to kind of cling on to the past, if you like, because there's nothing to replace it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's something to that where everything's shit. So, mm -hmm. but are they even trying? Like, are they trying? I don't even see them trying to make any idols anymore. And it's just yeah, weird I, I that they know. don't seem to be trying. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're, if they're trying to make it bad or they're just not trying at all. I don't I don't know what it is because I think it's um. um <clears throat> I mean, it goes generational, doesn't it? So the the people who are now making the films were learning probably early 2000s, like 90s or whatever, when they were at school and, and, and you know, learning to be filmmakers and script writers and stuff. So they, there's no excuse because you're influenced by good films. Yeah. So there must be some point where they, where they just kind of stop doing it, um, whether it's intentional, whether it's, it, you know, they don't get the funding, they don't get whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know how kind of deep it goes or who makes these decisions. Um, but, it, I mean, I think that's the kind of the agenda now is the idol rather than the person. So whatever the, you know, whether it's the pushing gays, whether they're pushing trans, whether they're pushing race things, whether, you know, whatever the agenda is, that's the idol. And that's what all the celebrities will. So it's, it's kind of like the celebrities will flock around the idol of the agenda. And then the public will flock around the celebrities who are flocking around the idol over the end. So it seems that's, like that's a that's a great point that the 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 new Brad Pitt and and Michael Jordan is the mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. They don't that's need idols, idols anymore because they've made an idol out of the movement, out of the agenda, mm -hmm. out of the virtue, and everything else. That's interesting. Yeah, because I mean, my other thought on it was, um, do they have more control by having less control? You know, by, by, by confusing everybody, like we're in our little tiny corner of the internet over here. And, um, you know, you know, I, I, most of us don't care, but you know, most, you know, you talk to most people out there, you know, they don't know about bears or, or mm -hmm. anything that we're into, or, you know, they might have some adjacent ideas or beliefs, but you know, there's how many content creators are there out, out there on the internet, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's so that are basically all kind of saying the same thing. You're going to vibe with these people or those people or anything else. So um, you go from two sides to all sides and nobody can agree on anything. You know, and the reason I look at it that way is because everybody has this disclaimer, right? Like, oh, yeah, I told I totally like so and so, but I don't agree with everything he says. Like, I never mm -hmm. said that before, you know, mm -hmm. but like everybody just has like this tick where they just do that now. You know, in truth, in trutherdom, or also in uh, you know, in normie world too. So, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, that seems to replace. Um, it seems to replace that I have a gay friend, or some you know, some of my, some of my best friends are black, or whatever. It seems you know, what I mean, you have to finish a sentence like that. Yeah. Um, and so now it's it's you know, I don't agree with everything he says. It's your your liability shield. Yeah. I hope you tell people that you have a black friend when you when you talk about me stuff. I don't. I, I don't have one, I don't think. I mean, there's, there's some, like, half-cast lad, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't any full blowns. Well. But yeah, there's a... Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Now you've thrown me off with your race war. Um, yeah, I have no idea. So if the, if the aliens come down... Do you think they're gonna make them friendly or scary? Do you mean are they gonna be ones that we have to change the climate for to to adapt and, and you know all this kind of nonsense, or is it gonna be ones with laser beams coming out their eyes? They're gonna be gay. They're gonna have. They're gonna love. They're gonna chop their dicks off and switch genders. All I think they will be like exactly what the agenda is, you know, and. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it'll, I, I think it would mostly be centered around climate change, right? Like, oh, you're killing mm -hmm. your beautiful blue marble. We flew here through the galaxy and it was all dirty because you guys are fucking, you're not, you know, you're so such a young species that you don't understand you're hurting your planet and the galaxy. And, you know, it's like, uh, Owen played this like a month ago, like space bucks from, uh, from South Park where they like do the test of the, the planets and everything. And we're such a mm -hmm. shitty planet. Like we can't be in the international federation like that'd be my guess because mm. um is that because they can lose too much control right if they come down and they start shooting us with laser beams and shit like mm -hmm. it's independence day like people can get real base real fast when they don't when they can't eat and they have to come together and fight mm -hmm. and, like 
you and your blue haired neighbor that you guys fight all the time, you don't like each other because you have a few different beliefs, all of a sudden like have something that you're able to bond over, right? And they don't want us to bond mm -hmm. over anything yeah, exactly. unless it's exactly what they want us to. So friendly and, um, and, and super woke would make a lot more, you know, mm -hmm. a lot more sense than scary, you know, guys that want to probe you. I mean, I'm, they're going to want to probe you, but not for the same oh, reason. Yeah, I mean, that's a given. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, so so. Probably, um, it'll be the new Stephen Hawking, won't it? It'll be some, like, retard aliens speaking through a translator or whatever. Well, I bet it would be more AI-based, you know? Mm. Instead of, like, these big, scary aliens that are, um, you know, look like your queen or something like that. Like, they would, like... To, oh we're more technological right because that would really support like the transhumanism and it would support like the general mm -hmm. technocracy like it and you know oh we got it i mean they're gonna land and be like oh everybody should be gay and we should definitely use cbdc's right like we should definitely switch to all this stuff and so if they're super advanced so much so that they're not biological or not completely biological anymore mm -hmm. like that could serve all the agendas i mean in a mm -hmm. lot of different ways and i think it would have to be friendly and they're here to help and you know, all that kind of shit. But I just, I think they're fucking teasing us just to fuck with us, you know, because I mean, I feel like they're never going to come and I, I can't, I'm really hoping they do. Maybe they'll be like, uh, what was he called? Um, Max Headroom, you know, the, the John Brim in like the 80s and the 90s. He was like a, yeah. like a computer kind of digital face that we used to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Screen. Oh, yeah, I know what you're so talking maybe about. Like, 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 like Kit, basically. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's how they'll communicate with us. They should do, if they have the, the spaceship kind of landing and it's just covered in crap, you know, like when they, they pull like a dolphin out the ocean and it's got like a load of like beer can rings around it and stuff and like uh, yeah. like an old nap and bits of paper and stuff. They should have the spaceship landing like that to show how dirty our planet is. Yeah, and uh, and I, I think the, 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 the AI angle and um, just technology in general can also do the main thing they need to do, which is like one world religion and like really mm -hmm. go after the religious aspect because, you mm -hmm. know, it could land and just be like, oh, you guys are killing the planet. You guys all need to bang each other. Uh, and, and like your God, and I don't think they'll come down and be like, there's no Muhammad, there's no Jesus, there's no um, Torah. They're not gonna do that. They're gonna be like, mm -hmm. all, of, all of those stories are the same and it's based on you know, this technology, how, yeah. how it applies to nature and how nature mm -hmm. applies to technology. And a lot of the things that we look into, you know, it's like the chicken before the egg, right? It's, you know, does this technology mimic nature, um, mm -hmm. which is obviously from my standpoint, what it is, and they can come mm -hmm. back and they can invert that and say, no, nature, like, is what technology is, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's why it all works that way. And depending on your worldview, you could easily look at it from that standpoint. So I don't know. Um, yeah, teach you how to internal squirt. Titty learned that around the campfire with uh, with Gardner at the festival. Yeah, I don't answer. Part of me thinks that the, the whole alien thing is is just um, it backs up the it, it backs up the kind of the globe Earth, the space, the you know you, there's millions of things out there, and, and you know all this. So if all these different things are just zooming through the sky at night. It shows that you know you're not alone in this great big galaxy, and you know what I mean. It's just, it just furthers the lie. Um, yeah. So it's it's whether they'll actually do something one day, I don't know. But then the other part of me thinks, yeah, they landed five hundred years ago, and they're living amongst us. So I don't, I don't, I, I like switch between both because both are equally as as likely. Because even if the, you know, even if there is a firm and, and and stuff like that, it doesn't stop. There's no saying that whatever can't get through. You know, the, where, uh, you know, however they do it, or they come from underground. I don't, I don't know. But there's not we, because we don't know a hundred percent what anything is. Then nothing's off the table for me. Yeah, and it, you know, it depends on how things go too. I mean, I think they have you know their general idea of what they want to do. They have their their trump cards on what they can play and um mm -hmm. depends on where we go as well like you know i can see them doing that as far as oh well we had to lie to you because of this that and the other thing to protect mm -hmm. you and all these other pieces and like yeah, guys yeah, like yeah. pat like pat life just joined and uh he had a great stream with um 
uh, Moon Jazz like last week, uh, going over mm -hmm. Foo Fighters and Nazi technology, but uh, like more specifically, like like what he he talked about this towards the end of his stream, where you know he lives in Hawaii and he sees like planes and you know unexplained things mm -hmm. that are going south where nothing else goes, and um, you know and how if you look at kind of all the you know realm Earth type stuff and everything, that's where you know certain interests are and everything else and people going Antarctica mm -hmm. and everything and you know I think the part of the alien thing that I think will be a part of it one way or another and this is where they've been here forever like you were saying could be a part of that is all the Antarctica stuff you know it's like oh they mm -hmm. found a continent under Antarctica or like didn't Russia just like leave the Antarctic Treaty or something like that mm -hmm. all this other stuff where um, you know they could easily pull that card as well so I don't know, you know, whatever. I mean, it's all going to be a gravel, right? Like, is there anything that they're not just rubbing their hands over, trying to trick us and screw us over? And um, Yeah, I mean, I, I just want them to make an effort with it. That's the thing. I mean, saying there's a cold going around is, is pretty lazy, really. So you, you, you kind of owe us an alien invasion because you've caused a lot of hassle over, you know, flu season. So you, you owe us, a, you know, a, a proper show. Yeah. Like, well, like Finks just said, like extra terror, right? Like over the ice wall. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that that's where I see all the truther stuff going, which uh, mm -hmm. um, is very much so like extra lands and, you know, like moon map or uh, no scum fund in map and all this other stuff that people are just pointing to saying like, oh, well, this is what it is. And, you know, mm -hmm. being into all this stuff for, you know, five or six years now, it's so interesting how people will just like, get wrapped up in something and that's exactly what it is and mm -hmm. um you know including myself in the past and probably currently mm -hmm. right now but i you know honing my discernment and trying to figure those things out a little bit more and the more nonsense and like just lazy truth or shit that's out there and i think mm -hmm. tiktok has helped a lot with this where it's like you know you see all these channels that have been around for a while too and they're like oh this is the new thing and it's like where'd you hear it like well my you know my documents are from tiktok from this like guy mm -hmm this 15 year old in his basement because I like the narrative. I like the story or it yeah. backs up what, what, what I've been saying or what I, what I'd like it to be. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, if there is an out or anything, cause they have to be telling us the truth to a certain extent. And so that's why I can uh, theorize a little bit more about extra lands and things like that is um, because they say we're going to Mars, we're going to this outer space, all this other stuff. Just like I mm -hmm. think there's something, there's got to be something to the globe, even though it's on a flat plane, as far as what mm -hmm. we can measure and really look at, right? So there's yeah. got to be something to that. Um, who knows, man? It's just, it's it's a lot of fun, you know? And that that's the point where I'm at. And I think that's a lot the point where a lot of bears are. Um, and there's not too many, you know, truth or corners of the internet that get into that point where you're just not like fear squirting and like, oh, what's going to happen? And, uh, you know, where you can just like really look into it and enjoy the ride and just have some fun with it and know you're probably never going to know and not just spiral about it. Because I know we've all been there. I know I definitely have. So, yeah, I think with the, the, the truth of channels, especially, it seems to be like, which I, again, I understand. I mean, they're, they're there to put out content. Yeah. Um, so if something new comes up, you know, so even if they have just seen it on the daughter's TikTok or whatever, they want to be the first ones to release it, you know. So then if it is true or, or whatever, and plus it just gives them, a, a, you know, something to talk about. Hopefully they get a bit of advertising on that video. And and everyone's kind of doing the same battle. Everyone's just trying to get content out there. Because there's only so much content you can have because you can't talk about half the stuff and the other half has been talked to death. So you have to kind of find new stuff on TikTok to kind of so all right. So now we live in a crater, or now we live on a on a bubble, or now we live on a back of a turtle, or or whatever. Um, you have to have all these new kind of videos that you make and and try and just to get views. Yeah, and you know, and most people are trying to do it for a living, and you know, I mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Like, if that's what you're doing, and you got to like censor mm -hmm. yourself on YouTube or on any of these other platforms or anything where, where what I don't like is when people are disingenuous, like mm -hmm. they're, they're not admitting that that's what they're doing. Yeah. Or, you know, you're, you're Sam Tripoli only talking about the Jesuits, but not the other J and you're just like mm -hmm. completely ignoring it. Like if you're going to say like, Oh, we can't talk about that or, you know, wink, wink or all, any of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, then that's very different than, Oh, it's only this, or it's only that. And you're, you're yeah. clearly, you know, and it's interesting the way people use shill, you know, shill can be used for mm -hmm. just in about anything. Um, 
But, you know, I think most people that are being accused of being a shill and people think like the, you know, the CIA is paying them to be on the Internet. I, there's definitely those people um, are just trying to make a living and they've taken mm -hmm. one little ticket and they'll take another one. They won't take this one, but they're willing to do this. And they've convinced themselves that they're still truthers as they're not being truthful to themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. Half truthers, baby truthers. Right. And it's like, um, yeah, the selective truth. Yeah, and if that's what you need to do to make a living, great. Just don't LARP like you're being 100. Mm -hmm. And that's what most of them, unfortunately, do. Yeah, yeah it is hard for some. Sign. Yeah, it's definitely hard for some because it is hard to kind of know what you can say and what you can't say and what you can cover and what you can't, what video is going to get taken down and stuff. I mean, we, we heard it with Hanging with Bears with, where we, got, we were getting strikes and stuff and we had – Kind of conversations between our, ourselves and said you know what what do we do here do we, which is why we end up going to telegram you know should we censor ourselves should there be should we kind of because we we don't want to do these streams and then they just get taken down straight away because it's, it's pointless it's just you know it's annoying to everybody yeah. um so you know we were in a situation where we thought you know well if we censor ourselves then you know we, everyone knows what we mean we just won't say the words and so you, you're already falling into that trap. So we said, no, fuck it, we'll just say what we want. And if it, if it gets taken down, it gets taken down. We, you know, we'll just do another one. Um, but if we were making a living off it, you know, if, we, if any of us were kind of taking money from it and stuff, then you, it, your decisions aren't, they're not always as pure as, as if it's kind of just for the, the fun of it. Yeah. And, and there's, a, there's a couple of truther channels out there that I respect because of that, because they'll be very honest about what they're doing um, mm -hmm. and that they're actually trying to make a living off of it. And it's hard and all this other stuff. And, you know, I think, you know, being in this community is like, it is the bar, like Owen is mm -hmm. the bar, like he'll go on there and say anything mm -hmm. and he doesn't care about the reper repercussions. And every time he goes out there and he gets kicked out of some nonsense, it builds up this community, but it's the example of hard work, dedication, and like very, um, you know, and, it, and he's also very talented too. You know, it's like everybody can't do what he does and build a community like this because he's doing so much more than going on there and being like, oh, did you know it was the juice? You know, everybody, mm -hmm. anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. But when you're talent stacking like he is and doing all this stuff together, it's easier to be able to make a living off of it. But I also, also think if he took any tickets here and there, it wouldn't be as authentic. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're all, you know, here in most circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's such the high bar. Like, I think, you know, it's easy for bears and people that are really in this community to, like, look down upon other people. Um, mm -hmm. Just like, you know, a, a truther will look at a normie and be like, oh, fucking retard with your mask on and shit. And it's like, we've mm -hmm. all done that, too. But yeah. you can grow from that as well. But um, I don't know. It's uh, it's constant learning and re uh, readjusting. Yeah, I mean, Owen's a kind of a good example, really. Of, like you were saying, where you get your your information from TikTok or whatever. I mean, in the in the old days, the the truth community would would spend you know a long time researching our topic because there wasn't that much information out there. There wasn't endless videos on it. There wasn't you know in you know Instagram or Twitter or, or anything. So they you know they'd have to actually research it, and then they'd, they'd present their information. And Owen gets a lot of his um, information from from videos, from us, from and everywhere. So it, it, but he discerns it. He'll say, right, you know, I think this is interesting. I think this is nonsense. Whereas the others just kind of scoop it all up, whatever they can talk about, and then just make a video on it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's. But again, you know, I, I get it if you're trying to make a living, but at the same time, you've got to. You're no different to people who are just churning out, you know, dog videos or whatever. There's no, you've no truth to you. You, you can't yeah. call yourself a truther. And, and I don't know why people kind of follow those channels because if you can't see it, then you're not a truther either. Yeah. Well, I mean, he showed some primary documents today with uh, the lack of Hitler's front bump. Those were some original pictures. Yeah. So, uh, what's the he's been working on? on that since World War Two. You know, so that's. That's a long time in the making. Um, what do you think of his eighties and nineties thing that he did recently, where kind of like it's it, it's not as good as we thought it was. 
Um, I, there's, that's definitely true in a way, but then mm -hmm. I think that, um, I don't know if that's as much eighties and nineties as, as much as it is like we're older. Mm -hmm. So could, you know, for the, you know, if Joe Gagan or any old people are in here, you know, would they say the same thing about the sixties and seventies because mm -hmm. it's when they were young, you know, when you remember you had this first experience or you met that girl or this happened or that happened. So is it like, is it like member berries more than it is the eighties and nineties were so mm -hmm. great because they were in a way, but it's also because I was young and that was the first album I ever bought. And that was the first yeah, girl exactly. I ever kissed and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. That's exciting. So, I mean, for our age group, then yeah, eighties and nineties, but I think it's probably the same for, you know, every generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there is a naivety to it, and there is a kind of like um, our futures weren't mapped out yet. So we, it was there was just a there was a there's a freedom to being teenagers and kids and and everything. Um, as far as like just the quality of things was a lot better, I think, on the whole. Do you know I mean especially kind of entertainment wise? You know, the quality of sport was better, the movies were better, the music was better. TV shows were better. I mean, there was, there's very few kind of like good anything now in in kind of that industry. So again, is that because people were more creative? Is it because they were allowed to do more? Is it because they're in, I don't know. But all that was was kind of miles better in the, the 80s and 90s. But there there was also obvious gravel. I mean that we we kind of missed, and whether our parents saw it, I don't know. But you know the 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 pushing of the, the gays in music, you know, or whatever, you know, all the way through the 80s. Oh, you look back at any of those videos. I mean, you'd, you'd be calling them out now if they were dressed like that. Do you know I mean? I mean, even like the likes of Boeing, so, you know, you're going back into the 70s. But it was there to kind of... I mean, I've, I've said this before on the thing, I think the way they've, they've brought the gays in, because if you, you don't have to go back that far where it was illegal. So you had to kind of normalize it. So, I mean, especially in um, in England, we'd have a lot of, all of the, the kind of comedy shows in the 70s, so all of the kind of the sitcoms and stuff, they, they would have a gay character in them. But they would be kind of very over the top, very camp, and everyone would laugh at them. And they were like the butt of the jokes, having the fun. But they would they have to be... Um, they were there to kind of like you know they're, they're harmless and they're just you know they're just silly people but but and, and they talk funny and they dress a bit weird but you know they're harmless and so it just normalized it a bit do you know what i mean and then you get to the 70s and 80s and then you start putting all the rock stars in leotards and makeup and and all that so then that normalizes it a bit more then you you get to the 90s and, then, and so on and so forth and then you now you get to now um so the, the gravel's been going on for a long time. We just, I mean, we, we would never have thought that anyway in the 80s and 90s. We wouldn't have said, well, this is a, obviously an agenda to turn everyone gay by 2022. But it, our parents didn't seem to have a clue about it. I mean, my, like Owen said about Michael Jackson and stuff, and my, my parents didn't have a problem with me listening to Michael Jackson. No, I got a little picture of me, like um, my mom just visited like uh, a couple weekends ago and she brought like a bunch of old stuff. There's like a picture of me when I'm in like preschool and every kid is dressed up like Michael Jackson. You know, we all have mm -hmm. little jackets and gloves on and everything. And I didn't even think about it. Like, you know, you know about Neverland and he's a pedo or he's this or he's he's Dave Dave and all this other conspiracy stuff. But until Owen showed that the other day, I wasn't like, oh, it's in plain sight. He's just grabbing his dick and going, mm -hmm. you know, all this other shit. Yeah. And it's like it's like the proof is that, you know, all these kids came out and they said this about him and all this other stuff. It's like no, he's this innocent guy. Well, what is he actually singing about? You know? Mm -hmm. Well, he's super talented. He did everything on his own. Well, no, he didn't write it himself. And it's like, well, you can't have it both ways. You know, like, which one is mm -hmm. it? So it really is interesting how it's always in plain sight. And, you know, my thought about, like, just whether it's movies or TV and music is, you know, do they, did they just run out of shit? Like, did we do mm -hmm. it all already? Yeah. And then mixed with the fact that you have to be on the agenda now. And mm -hmm. there was a lot more freedom because there, it wasn't so dialed in. It was the, the frog was just starting to boil, you know, but 
when the frog's as hot as that is, as it is right now, like you have to keep it at that temperature. Like you can't play around with it. It hasn't gotten, it wasn't as hot back then. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it could be either which, or, I mean, I can still enjoy that stuff too. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I'll look back at in my youth, whether it's music or movies or TV and I can, mm -hmm. still, I can still enjoy it, but I almost always notice the nonsense in it now, mm -hmm. but, a lot of the nonsense that's out now, like I can't even stand it, you know, especially being a father and stuff and looking at what they're putting out there for the kids. It's like, it's beyond. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's not kind of, at least they, they, they kind of gave you something with it. You know what I mean? So they had a gender, but they also had quality music or, or movies or whatever. So there was like, you know, like you can separate it. Now it's just a gender. There's no qualities or anything. It's, yeah. it's just agenda um i was saying this to, to my missus the other day i mean i don't know if it's the same in america but the, like tv commercials if you look back at like or you, you think back to like 80s 90s tv commercials you th there'll be loads that you remember and if you saw them now you'd go, oh yeah i remember them uh, but if you watch them they are obviously from like say i don't know like 96 to 99 there's like a, a style that they were done in and you know, the, the, you can tell by the color of the film, you can tell by the way people are dressed, you can tell by the references, and they'll, they'll reference things that, you know, in popular culture. You can tell if one's done between 92 and 94 or, or whatever. If you look at a, a, a TV commercial now, you couldn't tell if it's done last week or in 2010. There's nothing kind of like linking anything together. There's no like, there is no popular culture at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So, and again, Owen was touching on that the other day, where you know everyone kind of knew Michael Jackson, everyone knew these things, and so we all had kind of something in common or something to reference. There isn't anything like that now. It's so kind of it's like scattergun. Do you know what I mean it's, it's so kind of spread out that there's no identity to like the years, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, even think about just like truthers, like you know most people don't even know truthers exist. Like people mm -hmm. in Nor because of Corona and anti-vax and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, people know that people are more aware of that now, but like the world that most of us kind of circulate in, uh, a lot, most people don't even know it exists. And it's, so it's such mm -hmm. a small little corner of the internet, let alone anything that's going on out there. Um, yeah. And look how decentralized this is, you know, and how there's mm -hmm. so many different opinions and everybody's got to, oh, I don't agree with everything this guy says, but, you know, all this other stuff where that's just like this little subsect. So that's where I was going into earlier. Like, are they, do they have more control by not having control? Because mm -hmm. everybody's, instead of just red and blue, now it's like, oh no, you know, you listen to Alex Jones, like total shill and everything. It's like, well, mm -hmm. yes, and I don't enjoy him, but. You know, I could speak a lot. I don't know. I, you think you can have a better relationship with somebody that's like a, into the meatball versus what mm -hmm. you're into. But I think there's yeah. more division there because you have a higher expectation of them and you like expect everybody to be the same. When you're dealing with a normie, you're like, oh, okay, well, they don't know any better. But then somebody else is like, oh, I, I, you know, I really listen I all the time, time about that, especially about the meatball. People that have been truthers for a long time, they'll go back and be like, oh, well, Alex Jones said, and I'm like, you, I'm like, you know that he's a complete, you know, like, why are you still doing mm -hmm. that? But, you know, it's still like 90% agreement on most things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. have this like higher level of judgment. I, I just, my ear, ear piece just died. Can you still hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to kind of like you were saying with politics and stuff before, where you, it's almost like a sports team thing. I mean, this is our team. So the Bears are our team. And, Alex Jones is a rival team and Shapiro is a rival team and whatever. So then their their fans are rival fans. So yeah, we all like football or, or whatever, but we support different things. So we all like the truth. We support different people. And there is just that, I think it's just a natural thing as much as anything else. There is this rivalry. And then when you, especially where you kind of, um, where we're marginalised and we, we've kind of had to find each other and we've had to find this little corner of the internet to just kind of speak freely or to, to share our views on things and stuff. To a degree, so of Alex Jones's audience and so of Shapiro's audience and so, you know, I used to watch Shapiro for 
like a couple of months because oh okay you know at least he's standing up to people um so you know those those people in everyday life aren't accepted so i think that you you kind of the people create these divisions by not by i don't know how to phrase it really but they're kind of like our guard's already up because of normal people in everyday life. And so when a when a rival kind of truther gang comes into town, it's like West Side Story. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like we're all kind of just sit there clicking our fingers, wearing our own merch. Yeah, it's uh, there's definitely human nature to clicking up. Um, I think we look at it differently because of the, the nature of what we're into versus just mm -hmm. some football or basketball or whatever it might be mm -hmm. but yeah i mean like i people say oh i love basketball and it's like i like i used to watch football all the time um you know fantasy football leagues like being mm -hmm. like for five of them and um i mean i was a huge lakers fan growing up like i learned to drive in the parking lot of the, the old lakers forum and like dad was taking me to games and everything and i used to like right before i got into truth or stuff i was i was probably the heaviest i ever was into sports right and into basketball and i enjoy basketball i enjoy watching it i enjoy football i don't like baseball as much i like going to games and stuff like it's mm -hmm. just watch it on tv and soccer is just like gee, you guys are just running in circles and nobody scores just completely pointless but like it's, I, it's a thinking man's game that's why so uh what i thought like you know in hindsight looking back at it um, like I was just getting sick of everything and I just needed something to put my energy into. Mm -hmm. like, I haven't watched a, a Laker game in like two years. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch any football last year. Um, I didn't even watch the super, I didn't watch any, I just don't care anymore. And it's like, did I ever mm -hmm. enjoy it? Or was I just filling the time with something that was, mm -hmm. you know, and I wasn't trying to fit in or anything like, I, you know, it was just kind of like, Oh, and um, just something I could put my energy to into. And I um, like I've never been a tech guy. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have IG before bears or anything else. Like I have yeah. a, like back in the day that I check like once a year and I like have to ask my wife how to log in. Like I don't like any of that stuff. And the only reason I'm on the Internet, to be honest, is is bears and truth or stuff. Mm -hmm. Right before I got into, um, I never listened to podcasts or any of that kind of stuff. It was all yeah. tele or movies and, and music. Mm -hmm. and, um, and right before I got into truth or stuff, I almost like started getting just like bored with everything out there. And I started to listen to like sports podcasts. I spent a lot of time in the car and I'd listen to like all these like, um, you know, imagine like ESPN shows like, uh, I don't know, like first take and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, but I would listen to like people talking about those shows. Like, mm -hmm. like I listen to truth or stuff now. And like looking back at it, I was just like, I don't know, seeking for something. And mm -hmm. it just, that's what was there before something mm -hmm. else came along. So I don't know. It's, um, it's interesting how we'll, we'll find something to put our energy into it, even if we really don't truly care. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that made me so passionate about all this stuff is like, I finally found something I actually cared about and, and, and meant something for real and the real, mm -hmm. and not just whether or not the Lakers got the right draft pick, you know? So, um, I don't know. It's interesting how, uh, what we'll put our energy into. Yeah. I mean, it is sports for me is a difficult one. Um, cause I know it's nonsense and I know it's graveled and I know it's, it's, I mean, I don't, I went to the game on Saturday and I genuinely, I couldn't be bothered going like all week. I'm thinking I can't be bothered going on Saturday. And I haven't, I haven't, I've never thought that be before like the last 18 months or something. It's just got so bad. And so like, just, just the whole experience has just changed. Um, and I'm surrounded by morons and it's just, yeah, it's, it's just not fun anymore. But at the same time, I can't not go. So it's it, it's still got a hold of me, Jimmy. You know I mean? It's still got this kind of like thing of me. Like I like we're playing tomorrow. I'm already looking forward to it. And then once it'll get to it, I think I can't believe this. So it's it's weird what what 
you kind of how your brain works because you know it's stupid but you still put all your energy and, and stuff into it especially like you know when the the day of the game um because i'm trying to not because we've both got season tickets my lad and me and i'm trying to not get him into it as much as i am if that makes sense to me i'm trying to kind of like which is and i sound awful I, I, I can hear myself talking sometimes and i'm just saying how bad it is i'm just saying you know, I went at the match and moaning and just like a moaning all the way, walking back to the car, and moaning all the way home and just saying how bad it is and, and how bad sort of sports got, football's got, the world's got and everything. Just to, just to stop him getting into the same trap that I'm in. Because I can't not go. I can't, when season ticket renewal comes up, I can't not renew it. It's, uh, you know, every generation's different and whatever's going on and everything. But I have kids from our oldest is 21 in a few days. And mm -hmm. then uh, our youngest is almost five. And, mm -hmm. you know, like four kids at different stages, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and none of them are into sports or follow sports or have a favorite musician or, right. or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's very interestingly like this, like they just don't have the same focused mm -hmm. passion and i think there's um and i think th that can be really good if you know how to harness it but i also think it leaves and i think that's part of the the generational issue that a lot of you know i feel like an old man yelling on my lawn like a lot of kids have nowadays right where it's like mm -hmm. we had something to put our energy into right mm -hmm. at least you could go to the warp tour you could go to Lollapalooza, and you can get behind the bands mm -hmm. and you had like and you have posters on your walls or your your sports team, yeah, yeah. all this other stuff. And there's just not that thing to put your energy into like there used to be. And, and kids find themselves on the internet in little tiny mm -hmm. things that hold their interest and they feel yeah. so lonely, you know, let alone they're not playing like we used to and out and about and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. So it's create, and that's what I think the gravel in it is. It's like, mm -hmm. At least if you're all together at the, the soccer game or the Laker game or, you know, going to the, the, the warp tour to see your favorite bands, it's like you're all getting together to go do something together. Mm -hmm. um, you're getting yeah. to play Nintendo in the same room. Um, yeah. And now everybody's in their own little cubes alone, su super hyper focused on what they enjoy, which is mm -hmm. catered to them perfectly. So mm -hmm. perfect for like these like, small box little technocratic slaves that they're trying to create so and i think that's the general that i mean that's my overall thought on where it uh you know why they're breaking down the larger idols because they they got in the way of where that's going you know and like you think it can sway more so but you don't need a centralized point to bring everybody in the same direction anymore and i maybe that's just something they've uh, figured out over time but it seems to be working quite well yeah, it seems to have got, um, like, the worlds have got smaller. Even though, because there's more stuff out there, they, they, they'll, like you said, they'll have to hone in on something. But instead, they'll, they'll hone in on Instagram, and they'll just spend all day just flicking through Reels, or they'll, they'll TikTok and just spend all day flicking through that. So they're not actually focusing on one thing or putting their energy into one specific thing. It goes. It goes back to the kind of the agenda instead of the the actor. Do you mean it's it's the big thing? So it's the, it's the Instagram rather than what's on Instagram, and then instead they'll just waste hours and hours and hours just scrolling through, feeling bad about themselves, you know, whatever. Um, so even though there's like, I mean, eighties and nineties. I mean, pre-internet, pre. I mean, there was, there was very little to what kind of actually do in the house, Jimmy, you had to go out and do something because you didn't have much on TV. There was like three channels, four channels or whatever. You'd watched all your videos like 200 times. Your computer was pretty crap. And so you, you'd have to go out and play and stuff. Whereas now, they, you know, imagine giving 15 year old you like a, a smartphone and said like, this is the internet. It's got everything in the world on it. You'd be fascinated by it, but now it's just a given. It's just you know they just take it for granted. It's just there. This is the way things are. Um, 
but I don't think it's helping them. I think it's making it even worse because, like you said, there's no kind of like communal focus. It's all that spread out that everyone's just kind of finding little pockets to scurry into. Well, you know, everybody talks about like, oh, time goes by so fast now, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think a big part of that is we have we have so much like there's so much there's always it's just flashing 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 like this, that, this it doesn't matter what you're into there's mm -hmm. so much content and there's never enough time for all of it and you can mm -hmm. have access to it you have your phone and no matter where you are and you know people that you know aren't you know people just want to check out and so instead of just watching a show that we can all talk about around the water cooler you know you're on your game or you're listening to your bear stream or you're doing this mm -hmm. or you're doing their own thing and it's constant yeah. so i think that's a big part of why everybody thinks you know time's going faster because it is because we're so busy yeah you're just wasting it busy because there wasn't that much going on mm -hmm. no there's still i mean there still isn't we make we make ourselves busy we make ourselves distracted do you know what I mean there's not yeah, granted, some people are working more hours than they used to or whatever. But other than that, there's nothing more going on in the world. It's not like we now have to come home and then, you know, do five hours of labor to get the house heated or anything. Do you mean everything's done for us? Um, or it is in easy supplies. Do you mean, you can always get all the wood if you've got a log burner. Or you can always get all the coal. You can always get all the, you know, it's it's all just there. You don't have to go hunting for it. So we have more time now than we ever have, and we just waste it because there's just so many distractions. I'm I'm as bad as anyone, and I'm notice myself doing it. Like every ten minutes as well, I'll just pick my phone up and just scroll through. Like I'll look at our group chat or I'll look at whatever. Do you mean? And I'll just for no reason. Do you mean? I don't kind of think about it. I just find myself doing it. Well, Pat, like just put in the chat like in breath connection to breath, and I've mm. always had a like I'm always thinking and going and no matter what, right. Whether it was the nineties or, or now it's hard for me to like concentrate, like, um, on one specific thing without my mind wandering. And mm -hmm. like, I, I hate, I've always hated reading because I just can't focus on it yeah. I'm for something else. And, mm -hmm. and year and a half, like I forced myself, I, I read the Bible. I just finished book of Enoch and, um, and I started the Quran this morning and, mm -hmm. I'm really trying to like just gather knowledge from a different perspective and being able to focus on that. And my mind still goes off, like it takes mm -hmm. me books because I, um, I have to reread and it's yeah. like, I'll just read a whole page and I'll be like, I have no idea what I just read and mm -hmm. I'll and take a look at that. So, um, and I'll, you know, I'll just, you know, tell you guys right now, I mean, I need to super chat for this, but I mean, I, I'm just going to own it. Like, I mean, you guys will say I need to super chat for this, but I'm going to own it like stunt stunt. You own being gay better than anybody else. Like you do all kinds of gay shit, but you're just like, no, what are you talking about? Like, I'm the fucking man. So, but this might be a little, this might be the thin gay line. This might be, you know, getting close to at least four tapes. Uh, the chat can judge you. But, uh, what's that? The chat can judge whether it's which yeah. side it all goes on. Not me. Um, so the only time I can I can quiet my mind and not have like going all over the place is right. I do uh, yoga like every morning, and right. started doing it because I no not rollerblading, um, and I started oh. doing it because I've got like a jacked up neck like I had surgery like ten years ago, and. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's the only thing that like, uh, like helps my, um, like keep me in shape from that perspective. Like I've lifted and done all kinds of stuff to like stay mm -hmm. in shape. But as far as my neck pain, it's like the main thing that's helped me. And, mm -hmm. and I found myself like just sitting there. <laughs> I think Toronto Jew Bear just uh, uh, voted for the chat. Um, but, uh, but it's really, it's the only thing where I can actually quiet my mind. Mm -hmm. and, Really interesting where I can just like focus on it and listen to the crazy lady being stupid and just tell him you know oh stretch this way downward facing that and everything else and mm -hmm. um it helps me physically but it actually slows down uh and and like what I brought that up not to uh, dox myself on how much I need to super chat but uh because Pat talked about breath and I think that's what mm -hmm. it has to do with because I'm actually focused on it like I'm focused mm -hmm. on 
it's like I'm doing so I have to put energy into something while I'm doing something else that like actually calms my mind and it has something mm -hmm. to do with it well and uh, Peacemaker Bear did a, a talk about that at the um, at the conference too so I don't know and for somebody who never is able to like calm down just in my own mind and be able to think it's mm -hmm. really that, that focusing on the breath is something that's actually been able to calm me down in a way I don't know it's interesting and yeah I need a super chat and might as well go get some roller blades like like berserker bear so do you have a goat as well when you're doing it say that again you use a goat as well because that's the thing isn't it goat yoga no the baby goat yoga no 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 baby goats just by myself in the in the basement with a, a lady on youtube and your yoga pants oh definitely i have my yoga pants on with your uh fupa showing <laughs> a little bit more of a front bump i had um I had a spell doing yoga when I damaged my back. It was a, it was just to, to loosen it up and stuff. And I, I was, I was doing yoga. Um, I, I did find it good actually. I found it, it does kind of loosen a lot of you up, especially kind of legs and hips and and all that kind of thing. It does because you spend so much time sitting down, whether you're driving, whether you're at work, whether you're watching TV or whatever. You're just kind of sitting all the time, and you you kind of set into a shape. So doing things like that that just kind of open you up and stretch you and especially like your diagonals um you know so from your your, your left leg to your right shoulder and, and vice versa and so so you, you're doing all your kind of your sides and your back and everything it, it was it was really good I, I i can't regret stopping it now but it was just i think it was because i had or it wasn't even my um thing emma it was emma's dvd but it was just like the same thing every day. Do you know what I mean? I should have got a couple of them really because you just got bored of doing it. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I really, I, I just, I like doing it. I'll do, probably mm -hmm. do it days a week. And when I don't mm -hmm. get to it, um, like I can, I feel it in a different way. But like, it's hard too. You know, you you like mm -hmm. think of like what yoga is before you actually start doing it. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, like standing, they're just like, doing this little pose and they're just doing this little gay thing or whatever but like it takes more energy for me to do that and more strength in a way and like especially mm -hmm. your strength um to be able to do a lot of that it doesn't really look that hard um in comparison to like being a muscle head and lifting a million pounds mm -hmm. so um and uh you know I've, I, I still need to catch up on a lot of it but um i started looking into what pat life talks about and he's got this certification in um gota which is like a certain way of like stand it's like just the way you posture yourself and the way you stand and all this other stuff. And there's so much gravy in, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in, in our bodies and the movement in our bodies. And especially nowadays, cause we're all just like on our phones all day or on the computer or driving and all this other shit that we weren't naturally built to do. So, um, you know, and I think uh, yoga being gay is a psyop to uh, keep us out of health. So I'm just going for it. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's a psyop or not. I mean, it is pretty gay um we need like a male version of it i think that's the problem because it's it's yeah it's, it's very kind of aimed at women so we need like a male version of yoga so i mean i, I suppose that's what martial arts are martial arts are like male yoga because they're not like you know we're not going to war or anything there's no need for us to know them so yeah stop doing yoga and go and do karate i'm gonna stick um, and as long as i'm doing i think if we're all in a room together you know stretching together then you know but maybe in in your uh, in your house all by yourself maybe it's okay I'm i don't know i mean if a, if a blow a roller a roller blade roller blades alone is he less gay i don't know i don't know um roller blade or roller berserker said, still gay. Berserker says he used to be able to do a full split so what's which is gay or yoga or doing a full split i doing a full split that sounds like something that terry and gary can do so i'm not sure about that but he also i mean he is blades he does roll the blade. all right so at least he owns it you know Owen just keeps looking at his his new driveway just wishing he could be that cool so he definitely owns it. i think he does i think i think he i think he rolled the blades on it that's the one thing he's hiding from he probably fell over his Ethernet card or something. That's why his internet was wonky today. It's a little grumpy because it's blue. Um, Fink says the the full split is a pinnacle of sodomy. Well, I'll let you lot discuss it between yourselves, which is which is more gay. Um, 
Yeah, true. Martial arts was, was there to protect people because you can't reach enlightenment if barbarians are raping you. And that in itself is quite enlightened, so... Earth Diesel gets it. I used to do... Um, I used to do karate. I was a, a brown belt second down, so I was like one off a black and I quit. And I, it still annoys me that I quit, but I should go back and do it again. I don't know. Um, Roll the is actually a good workout. Okay, Mach 3000 is on a, a list at the moment. Yeah, Mach 3000 is trying to uh, ease us in. I think he is. He's going to show up with a yoga mat next week. Let's see. Um, it was brought to China from India. That's pretty cool. You're just breaking up like ever, like slightly. It's, it's, it's just kind of a bit jittery on, on your side. Oh, I can still see you just fine. I can see the chat's wrong. Yeah, I'm getting that like spinning circle sometimes on, on you. So I'm getting like every like like four out of five legs. Um, Berserker is now offering to send pics of the split. No. Berserker, we don't need to yeah. He needs to see that. We believe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, if you two want to, you show him your, your best downward dog and he can show you his best split and then. You know, who knows what could blossom from it. It could be our first Hanging With Bears marriage. I can give you guys some uh, some additional ammo. I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. Can you go to... No, I mean, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, I suppose, if you're that way inclined. I mean, it does open your anus up, so it's, it's good for that. It just keep stretched. Later, Nato. Um, yeah, see you later, Nato. Um... I'm just trying to read through the chat because it's sticking slightly. Um, cool. All right. Do you want to do some quick fires then while we got a, a sec? Yeah, let's go. Let's see uh, however many more times I need to super chat based on my answers. Well, I mean, you're already you're already pretty high with yoga. I mean, I can't, your, your answers can't be much gayer than yoga. Let's see. Maybe I can surprise you. So, well, yeah, I mean, hopefully you don't, but... You know, because I, I do want to have a half cast friend. So let's have a have a think. Right. So what what is your favorite movie? What's your go to? Um, favorite movie, uh, still to this day, is Goonies. When okay. I, All right. That's a good choice. I'll tell you, it, it doesn't get old. And I know when I'd Willie and Steven Spielberg and all this other shit, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Fucking Goonies. Who's your favorite Goonie? Who do you identify with the most? Sloth, of course. <laughs> well, Sloth isn't a Goonie, is he? Which, which one would you be if you were on the... Um, he, he's definitely part of the gang. Last Goonie, but he, he joined up. He's in. Hmm. I don't know. I, I I always like gadget. I thought gadget was cool. Yeah, the gadget guy is cool. I always yeah, mouth was always kind of annoying. He was a little arrogant, little prick. And uh, yeah, I mean definitely chunk. I mean as far as like the the best character in the movie, it's by far chunk. He's got mm -hmm. lines. He's hilarious. Little fat kid. He always wants to eat ice cream and shit. He's great. Uh, okay, um, if you could go and see any band at their peak, who would it be? Um, let's see here. So I, uh, I have two very distinct tastes in music that generally don't run together. Okay. So like I grew up mostly right. to punk shows and, and also loving right. hip hop, all right? So perfect for a bowler bear, right? So um looking at both sides of those and i've seen one of the one of these bands and i wouldn't want to see anybody else even though by far it's the most like degenerate music that i can still enjoy to this day and it really is it's right. fucking, it's fucking gross um but uh a punk band called no effects and right. i've seen them like you know 20 times but that's my favorite live show and then the, the one band... So when, are they, when are they from? What's that? When are, when are they from? Were they like a 70s band or something? No, they're like... Um, so they're like, you know, punk started in like the 70s and, um, and then kind of 
all the bands that I listened to, like, grew up on, like, the 80s punk scene, like, the earlier punk scene. So they came around, like, 86, 87, and then they probably had their most pop, like, their breakthrough album in, like, 91 or something like that. So it was mostly, like, 90s. Right. Um, so, like, a lot of 90s punk is the main stuff. It's, like, all on this uh, label called Fat Records, or, the, like, a lot of it, um, which is, like, the lead singer of no effects it's his label and um so like bands like no effects and um lag wagon and 88 fingers louie and uh and no use for a name and like uh like whenever bb asks for songs like my favorite song that he does on the piano is fairy tale from new york you know it's christmas eve in the drum right. yeah. and i like that song and i know that song because no use for a name covered it like it's a punk cover yeah. So, um, so I love No Effects, but like they're, um, like you know, they're you're you're punk, right? Like you're, you're like you know, off to the side, and you don't like this stupid like mainstream shit and everything else, right? And nowadays they're all fucking jabbed up and wearing masks and like all the shit that you, mm -hmm. for the culture of it that I was into, mm -hmm. exact opposite. Like everything they were fighting yeah. against is now they're all mm -hmm. fucking mainstream. And um, like they did a, a album at the lead singer's house in like two, 2021 or something. I think Don of America sent it to me. He's the one who told me about it. And right. and uh, and they're all wearing masks. Like they're in the room, like getting, and they're like, "Oh, we just, we, I haven't got my vaccine yet. It hasn't come out yet." And all they're outside at this guy's house. Everybody's like six feet apart and wearing masks. And I'm like, "Aren't you the fucking like edge <laughs> punk band?" You were like, fuck George W. Bush in like 2000, mm -hmm. not my president and all this stuff that I was into. And um, it's it's like the exact inversion of what they were. So, mm -hmm. but they're just complete degenerates too, in so many yeah. ways. So, but uh, that's probably my favorite band. But then also um, Wu-Tang Clan. I love, I love, I love hip hop. And, um, uh, and I never got to see them. I, I was... Mm -hmm. uh, Rage Against the Machine, Bravo Bear just said, 97. I had tickets to Rage Against the Machine and Wu-Tang. And then the, the the stop before they went to San Jose where I saw Rage Against the Machine, Wu-Tang dropped out of the tour and I never got to see them. So um, those would be the two. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've never understood punk. I don't get it. I don't get what the... I mean, maybe I haven't listened to the right the right punk music, but cause it, well, obviously we had like the Sex Pistols and the Clash and you know all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was just never I didn't get it. And then yeah, yeah. oh, uh, Ghostface, Ghostface is out out front by about uh, he's he's leading more than anybody else. And then like Raekwon, um, Jizza. But um, mostly Ghostface is, is uh, his solo stuff. I really like. When yeah. was the last time you saw him in concert? Oh, Buzz, uh, Buzz Wrecker. What's up? Well, when was the last time you saw them in concert? Uh, Wu Tang. Yeah. No, the the others. Oh, um, yeah. Ne never Wu Tang. You know, the funny thing about Wu Tang too is, um, Owen mentioned them in a stream, like two months ago or something. Right. Uh, I think it was when he was doing like the cuffed music episode because as much as I like go, right. this shit is kind of like he gets into all like this romantic kind of hip hop like oh woman mm -hmm. queen and shit like that like yeah. especially later stuff after he stopped selling drugs and shit like that in his music and um, mm -hmm. and uh, I and as he's talking about it I'm like driving uh, to work somewhere like hours away and there's a mm -hmm. board of Wu Tang that's gonna be in St Louis. Mm. and i was like i can't believe it like that's the one like you're asking like who would i you know favorite band mm -hmm. and i i had no desire to go mm. i want to go to that show i was like i didn't you know you know i guess i'm a i'm a boomer like that but i'd probably rather go to a uh a no effect show if it wasn't for the, degen the de degeneracy bad religion social distortion Face to face, Pennywise. Yeah, face to face was great. I saw face to face. The last time I saw No Effects, I saw them with face to face and Pennywise in uh, in Los Angeles in twenty 
15, 16, something like that. It was the Fat Records 25 year uh, anniversary show. I don't know how a punk concert would work really, because it. I get it on like a small, intimate level. If you if you have a stadium of of punk or whatever, I don't I don't get that. But it's similar to like Wu Tang and stuff. I don't I don't understand. I don't know. It's just never been my kind of thing. I I, I like Gravel Pit. That's it. That's my extent. That's my the knowledge I have of Wu Tang. Um, you like the Eagles. You're like in the boomer shit. So you know. Well, no, I just like. I like strong melody, strong like beat, good lyrics. That's it. Do you know what I mean so? Because I I love like Meatloaf and Bon Jovi and all all that kind of like genre. And then I love the Eagles and and the kind of sixty stuff. And then I love Guns and Roses. And REM to me are the best band there's ever been. Because they kind of they have a bit of everything. Yeah. I've seen them live and they were they were amazing. Like they were, they just had this like because I've I've been to quite a few concerts, but REM had this like aura around them, like you were watching, just you were watching more than a concert. Do you know what I mean? It was it was weird, um. But they just had this, which I imagine like you know, the the super bands would have had in the time. Which, yeah. which we can't can't watch anymore. But I, I watched REM. I don't know when it was. It was like ninety. No, it wasn't. It was two thousand five. I watched them. Um, it was just after Liverpool won the Champions League. I watched um, REM. Yeah, yeah two thousand five. Uh, truth or lyrics and REM and a lot of shit. I mean, there's a lot of super truth or lyrics out there that you, nobody mm. beforehand. But REM never. Um, because even though they're a big band, they never kind of cooked to anything. Do you know what I mean? They, were, they, they made it. That, that well, as far as I can tell, anyway, they, they, it does seem to be like an organic journey. Because yeah. until, like, Losing My Religion and stuff came out in the, on the, the Out of Time album, they had, like, five albums before that. And they've been going for, like, six, seven years. No one had really heard them. They had, like, you know, like the, the one I love and stuff. But they, no one had really... They, they, they weren't charting. Um... And so they, they just grew kind of organically. And then that's what the Shiny Happy People was. The studio said, we, we need you to make your songs that you're miserable, basically. Like, we, we need you to make a pop song for us. We need you to make a, like a happy pop song. So he went away, wrote Shiny Happy People just to take the piss. Took it in and then, oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. This so we'll record it. Um, and that's all that was. It was just him taking the piss out of the, the record company. And the, so it's never on like the greatest hits albums. He never plays at concerts. He, he hates the song, but it's kind of shows how stupid the record company are. Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. Yeah, Bad Religion had sick lyrics, but I was never really into Bad Bad Religion felt like to almost almost all the bands I really like will tell you Bad Religion is like one of their top five bands. But I just never vibe with Bad Religion as much as uh, a lot of the other stuff. And then like it was like this 85 to early 2000s. And then like MTV got a hold of punk and started screwing it up and like you said, like a how how that would work in a big show, like mm -hmm. you know, uh, ninety nine percent of the punk shows I've been to are small, and mm -hmm. you know there could be three hundred, five hundred, eight hundred people in a room, but it's in a tiny little venue. Yeah, uh, I've been to plenty of shows where there's like five people, and I've uh, like been a roadie in a band with my friends from college. My brother played a bunch of punk music and was always in bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, so there's only I've only been to a few like uh, they used to have this thing called the Warp Tour. I don't think that ever came overseas, but it was like uh, like punk Lollapalooza basically, like Lollapalooza, mm -hmm. indie rock, and all that kind of shit that was on MTV. And punk rock was like not allowed on MTV, and it wasn't there. And mm -hmm. uh, so they have like out these big outdoor festivals and stuff. Actually, my brother and I went. And I didn't see him. I I forgot about that. My brother and I went to. Um, warp tour when it came back when it wasn't all we stopped going for like 10 15 years because it became all poppy um but right. we 2019 and it was weird because like the when i was like going to shows and stuff when i was younger it was you know it was kind of brutal you know people you know have a pit and it was you know kind of an mm -hmm. intense and my brother and I are there in 2019 at like this outdoor festival and like all of our favorite bands and um, in San Jose in California. And uh, 
and they they have like a mosh pit going around all these bands that you like loved growing up and it was like dangerous to go to these shows and you'd, you'd mm -hmm. come with black eyes and bloody noses and shit mm -hmm. and, um and like people are just like skipping and hopping around and like giving each other high fives and shit and like there's like kids there mm -hmm. like I, this one this one mom had like a eight-year-old kid there that was like standing right on the edge of where we were like right where the pit would be and I was mm -hmm. like standing in front of the I was like what is this mom doing like this kid's gonna get trampled and then mm -hmm. it starts like the first band that we saw when we got there and everybody's just skipping around giving each other high fives helping each other up you know and I guess that's a better um way of being but it just wasn't the same you know so yeah I don't know I still enjoy the music I didn't even know what a mosh pit was until I, I went to um I went to a festival in ninety ninety nine. So I was like I, I was eighteen. I didn't know what a mosh pit was. I'd heard of, I'd heard the the words mosh pit. I had no idea what it was. Um, and we went to this festival. It was like a three day festival. Loads of like really good bands there. But it was all kind of genres of music. They had like a dance music tent, and then they had like you know rock and you know whatever. I can't remember. I think it was a Happy Mondays we were watching. Um, and I said to my mate, like, let's, let's go to the front, and that's where the mosh pit was. But I, obviously, I didn't know what a mosh pit was, so I just, like, walked through. I had a beer in my hand, and I'm, like, just walking through. And then all of a sudden, the music starts, and everyone's, like, do, doing what they're doing. So I, I'm, like, kicking off with them all, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, be careful. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to drink my beer, like, stood in the middle of a mosh pit. So my mate, like, like, drags me out. So I'm, like, what the fuck's wrong with these people? Well, you, you, it, that's a mosh pit. So that, that's my one and only experience of being in a mosh pit. I, I, I spilt my beer. Yeah, Earth Diesel just said, like, uh, went to a show in 91 uh, in Hollywood, uh, Social Distortion and Bad Religion. And he's like, you know, Mexican gangsters, skinheads, sharps, bees, like, it, like, that's the way it used to be in, mm. in like, the 80s in those scenes where it was, like, every culture coming together it was like this angry fucking like music where people were just screaming mm -hmm. eating each other like when i was into it in the 90s it was like peaceful in comparison mm -hmm. to what it was like he was just talking about um and somebody asked earlier i was like did i dress punk and uh no like we uh like me and my friends were like you know we we're like southern california so it was like skate like surf mm -hmm. kind of punk and that was kind of this the scene and it wasn't like you know spiky hair and spiky belts and fucking you know boot mm -hmm. like that it was you know vans and surf shit you know basically um and it was almost like what's up longbow it was like uh and there there'd be those guys but that was more that was more like 80s early 90s and then you know through mm -hmm. the times i was into those scenes there'd always be like four or five of those guys around and everything but most people weren't dressing like that anymore yeah, full, yeah, exactly. Volcom and FUBU, exactly, fans. I used to have a bit of FUBU stuff. There used to be a, a, a shop locally, and it sold, like, um, like, Ivisu and Etienne Aseki and FUBU and stuff. So I used to have a few FUBU jumpers and uh, hoodies and stuff. I think you still do. I've seen you in a, a picture of you and your and your lady where the jeans were so big. I mean... You yeah, that's what you, that's what you got to do. I can't wear skinny jeans. I, like, I literally can't wear skinny jeans. Like, my legs are just too big for skinny jeans. Um, and I don't like, I don't like where jeans finish and you can see, like, the majority of your trainer. I think your trainer should be, like, covered. So, I, I have to go baggy jeans. I bought some more the other day. Oh, well, my whole so grade. That's... So we can uh, teach the Greeks how to dress. Yeah, I think I think I do. I I think I've got a Fubu hoodie somewhere. I used to have this white. It was it was awful. I loved it at the time, but it was like a proper like white sweater, um, and it said Fubu across. But it was like weird material. It was like wool or something. It was like written in. It was like a hor It was a horrible jumper, but I, I loved it at the time. Yeah, as close um, as to that was uh, cross colors in like junior high school or something like that, and that was that was pre uh, Fubu. And mm -hmm. I could, the pants were fucking huge and like the shorts were as big as I was. So I never mm -hmm. shorts or the pants, but I remember having like a, a pond, like a cross colors poncho or some shit like that. That was as, uh, about as gangster as I ever got. I had, um, it seems like you shared your yoga story. 
I had a, a, a two-piece leather outfit. So I had leather pants and a, the, and a matching leather jacket. Um, like a, like a charcoal off. I, I don't know if it was like meant to be grey or if it was just worn out black. But my nan got it for me. Because um, my nan used to go to like uh, like um, yard sales and you know or like junk shops and stuff like that. So and she she just used to like whenever you went around to her house, she'd give you like bags full of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So it didn't matter what was in the bag; she just wanted to give you like a lot of stuff. So like at Christmas, she'd come back with like the car filled with crap, um, and she got me this leather outfit. So it was like leather pants and and leather jacket and stuff. I got home, I put it on, and I thought, you know what, it looks all right. So I was only about, like, 12 or 13 or something. I thought, yeah, it looks, it looks, yeah I, can, I can live with this. Because at the time, um, do you remember Highwayman? Did you ever watch the TV show Highwayman? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like a one-series thing. I don't know why they stopped it at one series. And it was, um, like, these people who worked for the government, and, but they had, like, special, like, high-tech gadgets and cars and trucks and stuff. So one had a truck that turned into a helicopter and actually did turn into a helicopter. Um, and the cab, like, took off and stuff. And the other one had a truck that was, like, the fastest thing on the road. But they they wore, like, full like, Mad Max leather outfits um, with, like, big shoulder pads on them and like, they had, like, special machine guns and stuff. So I, I was in that mindset. So, yeah, I had a, a matching leather trouser-jacket combo. I do not want to see a picture of Berserker doing the splits, but I would like to see a picture of you and your your leather. Me and my, my leather gear. Yes, that should be your that should be your. Uh... It'll it'll probably be somewhere that because my mom chucks nothing out, so it'll be somewhere. It'll, it'll be in a wardrobe somewhere. Um. Yeah, no tempos or anything like that. I'm not a terrible B, you guys. I. Uh... I was a, a B on the weekends with my dad, but I never really tried to front or anything like that. So I'm I'm from the fucking suburbs. So was it Glendale you were from? No, um, that's where the Armenians are from. That's where Harry Bear's from. You're not right. like, unless you, you know, have a full beard by the time you're five years old. So, um, I'm fr I'm from a place like north of what well, my dad was in. Uh, <laughs> In Marina Del Rey, funny enough, where Owen used to, the last place Owen lived in right. Los Angeles, and um, so it's like Ven like most people are here of uh, know Venice, like mm -hmm. Venice, famous, right? You've probably been there if you've been to California a bunch. Yeah. So it's like you know, a mile away from Venice, basically, it's the same, mm -hmm. place. and um, like right there on the the water, and um, and then my mom was out in a place called. Uh, like uh, Valencia, which is where, um, like, uh, if you're from California or most of the states, it's a place where Magic Mountain is. So that's the same oh, okay. where I grew up in. Cool. I've been, I've, well, I, I've been to Glendale once because we, we went to, um, you know, the TV show Modern Family. Yeah. Um, my missus loved it, so we went to. You know, you find like the with the, the actual houses that are in the show. Mm -hmm. And when I had a look on the map, they were all like there was, um, I think there was one in Glendale and two in Burbank, I think. Uh, not Burbank, what's the, what's the other one called? The, the nicer place. Um, yeah, Glendale. Know, to each other. Yeah. That's where all the yeah, suits were Burbank, like we're all in that area. Yeah, it wasn't Burbank though. It was it was like a nicer area than that. It was it was very kind of residential. Oh, Brent. Brent. Um, what place from? What's that one? Brentwood. Brentwood, yeah. Yeah. And um, so the, there was a couple of houses that were in Brentwood and one that was in Glendale. It was really nice. I, I really liked it there. Um, it was it was a bit built up though, but it, yeah, it was nice. But I, I like Venice. I like Venice Beach. Whether it's a, it's been kind of taken over a bit now, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it got. I mean, I grew up going down there all the time because my dad lived right there, and it was like uh, it would go through stages. Like when I was growing up, it was like, like uh, you know, Muscle Beach and like mm -hmm. guys lifting and people. They didn't have rollerblades back then. Everybody was like uh, roller skating, and it was like a nice place where you could go. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, in the '90s, it turned into like Bloods and Crips shooting each other on the boardwalk, mm -hmm. um, and gangs moved in and stuff, and. Uh, and I don't know, last time I went there, it was just disgusting. It was like needles, mm. 
homeless. Mm -hmm. and, but it was that way. I don't, not needles necessarily, but I remember when I was growing up, um, it was like just tent city. Like there was mm -hmm. tents everywhere and homeless everywhere. And it's like, you know, if you're going to be homeless, do you want to be homeless in, you know, New York or you want to be homeless in, uh, you know, yeah. Venice or Santa Monica. So most people chose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just gross and degenerate now. And last time I was there, it's just all the same t-shirt shops and, uh, and, you know, marijuana dispensaries, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can tell it's kind of, it's got a past. You can tell it's got like, because I, I quite like, like the, you know, the, the kind of artistic -y type people. I, li I like those type of people. And so you can tell like that the, those people used to be there. And then it's almost like, I don't know, it's, it seems like it, all these places seem a bit weird where they kind of, the houses are super expensive, but the rest of it's a dump. So like, I don't understand why people are paying to live in, you know what I mean? I don't know why you'd pay to live in a dump. Well, and that's the way it was when I was growing up. It was like, all, it was a big art scene and it was like very mm -hmm. eclectic and a million different people from everywhere and everything. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know when it kind of stopped being that, but uh, it's definitely not that anymore. So, but you know, it's like you're saying, like it's super expensive. Mm. So, I mean, you yeah, gotta... you said San Francisco is the same thing with it's kind of crazy expensive to live there, but you don't want to step outside your front door. It's just like a weird, you think that those prices will be the lowest in the country oh san francisco used to be better too i mean i i went to college in northern california and then lived in like uh in berkeley and all, a bunch of my friends lived in san francisco so i've spent like a lot of time in san francisco and mm -hmm. it's uh not in the castro doing yoga before anybody in the chest got anything to say but um but it used to be more like that and now it's just disgusting it's you know needles and homeless and shit and mm -hmm. you know it's I mean, there's still nice areas, but it's so f expensive. Like all my friends, like, you know, we graduated college in the you know, early 2000s and all my friends could like afford to live there, you know, and it was, a, and uh, by the time I started like working around there and stuff in 2010, it'd be, or earlier than that, six or seven, um, you know, it'd be like three or four people in like a tiny little studio living. Mm -hmm. to, and now it's just not affordable. Like, mm -hmm try to do that you you can't afford to live there and it's it's disgusting it's like the worse it mm -hmm. gets the more expensive it's gotten so i mean but i don't know i don't understand why anyone would pay to live there just live in the suburbs and commute do you mean if you if you if you're working in a city because they can't be they can't be living there for like the city lifestyle of you know you step out your door and there's a million restaurants and bars and stuff because you you're stepping out your door to a homeless method you know, so you can't, you can't want that. Surely, I, I don't know. It's almost like the kind of these, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of these buildings are just empty. They're just kind of like pricing people out of them so that they don't, they don't want to make it better. Because I think if you had enough people in in San Francisco who actually lived there and cared about it, they'd, they'd force people to clean it up. They'd force the, the mayor or whoever, the, the council, or they'd just do it themselves and they'd clean up the city. So if you if you empty half of the people out, and you say, oh yeah, the, the, you know it's, it's too expensive for you to live here. Um, well, well, San Francisco is interesting because I mean I, I haven't really spent time in New York, but I, I imagine it to be the same way. Where, hmm. um, so like here's a perfect example: like a good friend of mine that lived in San Francisco forever, and he basically got a rent controlled apartment for like fifteen hundred dollars a month uh, right. with our buddy straight out of college and then he became like the uh um you know the super basically so he basically had fifteen hundred dollar rent there until he moved out in like 2016 or something same two-bedroom apartment like he lived the block he lived on um right right one block down were all gangbangers like mm -hmm. you could walk by like killing each other every day one block mm -hmm. one block up from him was the full house house that you see with the nice park that's probably cost twenty million dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's this weird thing in San Francisco and like cities like that where everybody's so piled together, like you almost like you can mm -hmm. have the cultures piling on top of each other. And I think that's the only thing that why people haven't gotten completely priced out yet and they've just been there their mm -hmm. whole lives. Um, and there was almost like this respect of, you know, you just don't go over there, but you know, it wasn't like but it was like literally a block away. You just didn't go down there. 
and you didn't, and there was no problem as long as you didn't go down to that block. No, I noticed it when I was there, because I, I stayed, the first time I went to San Francisco, I didn't know any of the areas particularly. Um, and I stayed in Tenderloin. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, the first time, the first day I got there, so I came out of the hotel and I walked, I was, I was trying to walk to like the center, because it was um, a shopping center and I had like a, an escalator that went round you know, rather than just straight up, it had like a circular escalator. So, oh, that's cool. I'll go and see. That was like the site I wanted to see in San Francisco. So I, I walked like down towards the center. But Tenderloin kind of stretches for, for quite a few blocks. And then all of a sudden you're in like the business district of town yeah. with like, you know, bankers walking past the briefcases and all that. And it didn't, there was no like, they don't go there and they don't go there. It was like, a, like all these kind of invisible lines. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting how it all coexists together. But, you know, as things get worse and worse in situations mm. like that you don't want to, those, those, uh, those respect and invisible lines and the way things yeah, are, are, are slowly going, slowly or mm -hmm. quickly going away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like that was that, uh, the thing everybody's posting everywhere. They're, you know, fuck around, find out, right? The chart. Yeah. I mean, that's about to be uh, every city. Or you don't even have to fuck around, but you're about to find out. Do you think um do you think it will come to a head and and if so do you think it'll happen like all at once or if it comes to a head in San Francisco do you think it'll like then the same you know just timing wise it'll happen in New York and LA and you know Chicago or, or any of these places or do you think they they're just kind of going to burn themselves out these people and nothing's ever going to happen the latter like i don't i don't foresee you know and i think that's why they don't do like you know evil alien invasion type shit or uh, you know anything that can bring us together because you know what mm -hmm. the, what they've been doing is working just fine and it's definitely mm -hmm. cut up more recently and um and you know everybody said oh civil war and all this other shit like no i mean the the, the left is not going to do anything and the right's not going to do anything either like the right mm -hmm. is harping with their guns and shit and polishing everything and it, you know 99 percent of them wouldn't do shit Mm -hmm. you know so we're we're spoiled fat like comfortable entitled americans like no matter 99.9 percent .9%, nobody's gonna mm -hmm. each other um i don't i don't see that at all like i can't see a situation where people are in the street fighting and killing you know outside of the antifa and black lives matter and like this you know fbi nazi group and all this other shit mm -hmm. like the fringes that they'll show you and pretend are a lot bigger um, aren't the real America, you know? So mm -hmm. most people are just going about their business. Most people don't even know what's going on, mm -hmm. which yeah. is that their innocence and their lack of care for the gravel um, is why I can look back on a lot of the COVID stuff and not be so angry about it because they just don't know any better. They're just going along to get mm -hmm. along and something that big comes along. Like you can't really blame them. They're just used to, you know, following the mainstream. And everybody gets yeah. so mad. It's like, oh, well, you don't see what's going on in the news. Most people don't even watch the fucking news. Mm -hmm. Never have, really. It's just, it's on the news. So you figure it's everywhere. And if you're into it, you figure everybody else is into it. You know, so I don't see anything like that happening here. Um, I can't see them drumming up, you know, anything to get people to go to war. Like, and they mm -hmm. could nuke on San Francisco and tell them it was Putin. I don't think people... Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be joining up to go fight. Yeah. So I, no, I mean, the, 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 the truth of community kind of proves that. I mean, now, how long have we been talking about Antarctica and still no one's tried to go? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, if you can't even kind of muster up a squad or a crew or something to go to, you know, to try and go, then the people who live in San Francisco aren't going to be motivated to, to do anything. But I think it comes down to, to necessity, really. People don't, I mean, they'll go to war if they're, you know, they're told to. But people don't generally fight or, or, or anything unless there's, there's something to gain or something to protect. So if you've got a city full of meth heads or whatever, you're not, what are you, what are you gaining or protecting? You, you've got nothing to protect. So the only thing you, you, you're possibly going to gain is money. So that's, that's just a mugging or something.
it's not an all out war. Um and the same for the people who live there, they've they've nothing to they've nothing to gain by fighting the methods or fighting the, the other people on the street or fighting the ones further down the road or whatever. And nothing really to to protect either because no one's got any pride in anything anymore. Um certainly where they live. Do you know I mean the if you look at like like older videos or older things, you you see like the women sweeping the doorsteps and sweeping like the 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 yard in front of the like where you know where the the doorstep was and stuff. Now people just throw shit in the garden, like literally like everyone's house that I know is a dump. I mean like no one cares. The same with the cars and stuff. The cars are just filled with crap. Like no one's got like any pride over anything. So no one's no one's gonna go to war or civil war or anything like that because no no one cares enough to clean the car out. No, I mean, they'd be more likely to go to war over their, you know, OnlyFans girl more than, mm -hmm. you know, country yeah. or city. You know, it's like, they're mm -hmm. right. There's there's no real pride in anything anymore. In the last mm -hmm. time they really drummed up that pride, at least in, in America, they killed everybody in, you know, pointless wars and, you know, more specific mm -hmm. opioids, right? And that, you know, so that generation, which is basically our age, a little bit mm -hmm. younger, um, you know, they fell for it. And regardless of what, you know, most of them aren't very proud about it anymore. And a lot mm -hmm. of them, they're the next generation. So like this generation, like, I don't know about, about your son, but like mine, there's no like America or if they, you mm -hmm. know, they were to bomb, you know, San Francisco, you know, I'd mm -hmm. you know, join up. Right. And, um, and, you know, in 2001, we all had like those moments or most mm -hmm. of them I knew. And, um, you know, most people didn't actually follow through with it because you just kind of get back to it or whatever, but a lot of people did. And that wouldn't work now. Like, unless you're going to threaten people's comforts, um, mm -hmm. that's the only thing. And well, it's almost like they've done it. It's almost like they've kind of tried to, try to not make you nationalistic. Doing, uh, they've certainly done it in England where they've kind of, Anyone who flies the England flag is racist, is you know, homophobic, xenophobic, what you know, whatever they want to call it. So it's almost kind of like it's it's frowned upon to to have the English flag up, um, unless you know it's a World Cup summer or something. But otherwise, it's it's a kind of it's a very frowned upon. It's very like if you've got a, an England flag tattoo on your arm or whatever, you're basically a Nazi. So there's no like pride in England. They, they t they'll send you all the way through school telling you about the British Empire and how bad it was and how you know we have to apologise for everything. So it's almost like they're, they're kind of going the opposite way. Whereas my my dad's generation, he's still very much like, no, England is the best. England, you know, we conquered the world. We invented everything. We taught everyone how to speak English. We, do you know what I mean? He's, he's very kind of like, he's a very proud Englishman. I don't care. My son cares even less. So it, and I'm assuming it's similar in America where they kind of like, no, you know, the, the American history is bad. And, you know, look at all these terrible atrocities that Americans done. Look at all the terrible and, and kind of associating the kind of like the white man with America and all these bad things that they've done. Um, so it's kind of hard to have like young patriots. Yeah, it's 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 gone as far as like national, you know, I mean, at least in the West. And, mm. you know, I, but I mean, that's what you need, right? Like if you're going to have mm. a world, everything and all this control, exactly. you need to get rid of, you know, national pride and sovereignty and borders and all this other shit that they're pushing. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think a lot, I've heard this from some people where it's like, well, how are they going to get everybody behind this new world order and behind this one world religion and government? They don't, you don't need people to be behind it. You just people mm -hmm. just need people not to care. Yeah. And they've done a great job at making people not to care and not to notice. Yeah, exactly. You know, they don't, you don't, if you don't notice you're being, you know, mm -hmm. managed at a, you know, at a level and that you're a slave, all the, all the better. You don't need to have mm -hmm. one world NATO government. Like you don't need, they don't need that. They just need you to take your vaccines and eat your corn syrup and get gay. And, you know, like that, as long as you're doing all that shit, you don't need to have pride in any flag. Mm -hmm except for your virtue basically so i don't know i don't think it's necessary no it, it just seems like an odd um i mean it seems like
country and proud of what you know your heritage and all that but then at the same time you, there's a lot of people in the country that i don't even like do you know what i mean so i don't i don't want to be associated with them so you know it, it's kind of time to which is what we're doing we you know we'll form our own countries we'll form our own little pocket of the world um okay if you had a time machine and you had to you have to spend a year there though so what time would you go to? Would you go forward, back? Or you have to. You have to stay there for a year. Hmm. Um. I don't know. I don't know. I've never really thought of that before. I don't know. I got to take my my hue into consideration, or at least what the gravelers tell me about it. Maybe if I would go back to those times where they told me I, you know. I was oppressed. Maybe I'd actually be a king. So who knows? Oh, well, you could but, go back earlier and then find out that you you never were kings. Maybe you could be the first one. Going with who we were, right? So I don't know. Like it'd be interesting to go back to you know biblical times, regardless. You know if that's all, um, mm -hmm. you know, accurate as far as timing, um, and or the beginning. The beginning would be really interesting too. Um, I you know I don't want to go back to the nineties or, mm -hmm. you know. Well, would you want to live a year at the beginning though because the, the, there's probably not a lot to do no there's definitely not can i bring my phone with me can i get can i get uh streams at unauthorized.tv or i don't know i don't know if you i mean you need a long ethernet card to spread back all that time yeah you know medieval times are interesting too i mean it's so hard to say because there's so much gravler nonsense out there who knows mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. yeah. stream stuff like uh medieval would be interesting um just like castles and knights and shit like that. Um, I, I'd have no desire to go back to any like uh, recent times, like, mm -hmm. like cities and all that kind of stuff. Like that wouldn't be anything that I'd want to do. But um, I don't know. I never really thought of it before. But what's your answer on that? Where do you, where would you go? Um, I'm torn really because I don't I don't really care about history that much. I, I care, but I don't. It doesn't. I wouldn't like to live in medieval times on too much like. I'd miss my fubu. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't. I couldn't wear right. medieval time clothes. My, um, my brother just pointed out something a hundred percent true, and he knows me too well. Like the, I, I, I wouldn't want to go back anywhere or anywhere right now where there's not deodorant, because he said the right. smell. You know, it's like, it's uh, like yeah, I couldn't handle the stench. I'm not above my comforts. I don't know when deodorant came in, because well, in the 70s and so stuff, people weren't using it really, were they? I mean, it was like, it was around, but it wasn't like a given. You're from Europe. You guys really don't use that anymore. But in America, people don't smell that bad like you're used to, so I'm not sure. I no, we're, 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 the, we're the home of the eau de toilette and cologne and all that. We, we invented the stuff, so it's, you know, you lot were still putting talc on your chins and trying to smell nice. Um, I don't know when I'd go. I, I, I do like the 70s. I do like, even though I wasn't, a, I'd like, I like the look of it. I like the way people dress. I like the cars. I like, I mean, I like the look of the 70s. Um, but it does seem a bit shit at the same time. But I'd also like to be a cowboy. I'd like to be like Billy the Kid time, like Wild West. So one of them two. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, as much as uh, the Cowboys is like, you know, we were talking about earlier about the movies and shit. It's like uh, when I think of Cowboys, I think of like Young Guns 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. But then back to uh, those movies and it's all 80s music. It's hilarious when I go mm -hmm. back to it now. It's like yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, the Cowboy, I'd have to have Bon Jovi like in my ear as I'm riding around. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I uh, I've said this before on the stream. The Wild West doesn't really make much sense. I don't get it. I don't because you've got all these outlaws who are, who are kind of running around and stuff. But at the same time, they have unlimited ammo. They have unlimited like they can get from one horse to another to another to another. They can just walk into a town or, or ride into a town and rob things and then ride out again, and no one shoots them, even though the whole population seems to be armed and like saloon doors are the the obvious kind of nonsense because you can't lock your bar at night so you've got all your whores upstairs that you can't protect and all your booze downstairs that 
yeah, alcoholics are going to steal. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of it is made up. I think, I mean, a lot of it's made up. And one of our favorite movies, uh, it was always Tombstone. And I mean, those, right. you actually look back at like the history of, of the, of the Wild West. There was like, you know, five murders total or something. I think they all mm -hmm. happened on that day. You know, if that mm -hmm. wasn't the story too, right? But, um, you know, everybody was, I, they, they've done a, you know, Hollywood started with that, right? Like those were the big Hollywood, especially like masculine. Mm -hmm and everything else when it first came out it was like war or old west right so mm -hmm. grow up and they made it look like everything was dangerous and crazy mm -hmm. and the wild west it was probably peaceful and calm um because they try to tell us the opposite right so who knows well it seems to have it seems to have happened all of a sudden because it, i mean america is not that old and, and certainly the west side isn't so you have all these people kind of slowly moving across and, and settling and then starting up you know little homesteads and starting up a little business or whatever and then the next lot come on and move a little bit further so to go from all that to then the wild west so you've got cowboys just wanting to and it doesn't seem to like the two don't really work together do you know what i mean and i'm sure it was brutal you know just because you know settling anywhere new is going to be brutal and yeah. you're just out there by yourself or with limited resources and shit ain't going to work out but yeah i don't think it's what they presented to us mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. The the first movies are either westerns or war, so they they get the the grappling early. You've got to admire them, though. You? You've got to admire the grapplers in in a way because they they they're persistent. I mean, they they work hard for what they do, unless they just have a team of them. But if it's like a handful of grapplers, they they've done a lot. Oh yeah, I mean, give it up to them. I mean, they're very talented at what they do, but um, mm -hmm. they fuck up all the time too. Yeah. If only they use their powers for good, right? Which is better, Young Guns 1 or 2? Uh, probably 1. Yeah, definitely 1. I mean, 2 is pretty good, but uh, I think 1. I, you got to go with 1. Are you, are you, are you saying 2? If I had to, well, I've, got, I've got them both on DVD, and when, whenever I watch them, I watch them both. Um. If I had to pick one to watch, I'd probably watch two. But I think it's just because I've seen one more. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so two seems a bit fresher. Um, plus, I like Christian Slater. So yeah. I, I like Arkansas Dave. You know, you got to watch them together. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, the the end of Young Guns. Have you have you been watching Blackpilled? Uh, not recently. I used to. Right. He did. Um, He's been doing these these um, these videos on like psyops, basically, and 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 psyops against um, like right wing militias and stuff. And he he did one on Waco, and he's describing Waco and shows all the footage and all this. And I'm watching it. It reminded me of the end of Young Guns uh, one. You know where they're in the house, so they're in the burning house, yeah. um, and the, the government come and they they don't come out, so they set fire to it. And then they have to escape out. It, it, the, the whole setup is, is very similar to Waco, the way they, they, they did it. Um, I thought it was interesting. I mean, if that's factually accurate of what happened. Because a lot of Young Guns is, is well, you know, fictionally factually accurate. But, the you know, the real people. Um, so if, that, if that's something that happened, that could have been the inspiration for Waco, I don't know. Because I don't think Waco was as we're told. I don't think anything is as we're told. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's generally the opposite, right? So they say it's the bad guy. They're probably the good guy. I mean, you know, if you have to pick a side or good or bad, it's probably that way in most circumstances. But, mm -hmm. you know, we all got our problems. Um, let me just check the chat. I saw something here before. Um, I don't know. I've lost it. Okay, if I was to go to your bedroom at fifteen, what did you have on the wall? Was it was it all Wu Tang or was it? No, I didn't even have like posters or anything like that when I was a teenager. Up like that. What was it when I was fifteen? I mean, I'm a little bit older, so I mean, I'd have like uh, the only thing I remember hanging in my room when I was fifteen was like one of those uh, uh, 
um, you know those paintings that are just like a million dots, but then it makes a sailboat or some shit like that? Right, yeah. That's what I remember having in my room. Oh, the Magic Eye thing. What's that? A Magic Eye poster. Yeah, yeah. I remember having, mm. I don't remember what it was. I feel like it was a boat, but that was in my room forever. I remember having this like super like 80s fucking like picture that was like framed. It was huge. And it was like, you know, a pink streak and a blue streak. And it was just mm -hmm. like, yeah. If you had a like picture like, the 80s mm -hmm. that's what i remember but you know I'm, I'm 43 so i'm not that old but i remember as far as i mean i grew up as a teenager more in the 90s mm. that's what i remember having in my room i don't remember like bands and shit like that that was more when i was uh, that was more like college i could never do magic i posted used to do my editing. but um I, I was born with cataracts in both eyes so i've got an excuse for not being able to do it because but yeah, I wouldn't, and I, I never saw the point either. Because surely once you've done it, you've done it. Do you mean why would you want to do it again? Well, you know what I mean. Once you see it, you can see it. Yeah, and it's so easy then, after you see it, but then you always lose it, right? So you can see if you can get it back. And I don't right. know. He says it was the anal fisher, the sailboat that was in my room. It's a, it's a distinct possibility. I never saw Gary or Terry, but I do think it was a sailboat. Do you think that's why you now do yoga? Something like that. I mean, it could be something deep seated inside me. Who knows? Got to stretch. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you, you've got Muscle Beach, and then you've got. If you if you don't think yoga is gay, if they replace Muscle Beach with Yoga Beach, do you think that would be more or less gay? I mean, I I think if you tried to do some downward facing dog, you'd come back on here in a week or so and just uh, and have to super chat yourself. So. To try it out first. See what uh, see what works. Well, no, I mean, I, any man who challenges you to a, like a yoga off, I mean, that's that's instantly a red flag. <laughs> it's not a it's not a dance off. We're not in person here. I mean, it seems a bit like a dance off. I mean, it, it does seem. I know I said West Side Story before. It does seem a bit yeah, West Side Story for us to be doing yoga moves at either side of the room. Put your Fuba jeans on and start stretching. Um. My back is so sore. I could do with some yoga. Yeah, see. But I'm also married, so I don't. I don't really want to wreck that. Um. Right. Cool. If anyone's got any questions or anything, just stick them in the in the chat. Um. Otherwise, is there anything else you wanted to mention today? How, how was it with Owen? Was it? As you expected, or yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great time. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, he's pretty run and gun, so he just like sent me a Zoom chat like mm -hmm. a minute before I jumped on. Right, and rift, and it kind of happened. You know, just happened to be the perfect day where my mulatto brother was uh, kicking him off of Instagram. So I was able to give my perspective from both sides of the story, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying the bear streams, like. Um, you know, I'm just like a dude. I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, to have on these guys, like, whether it's homeschooling or Artos with the demon stories and everything, like, mm -hmm. I could my 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 panda perspective on Andrew Tate. But uh, I've really been enjoying them. And so I'm looking forward to some uh, some other ones as well. I mean, there's so many bears that, you know, are, are so talented and could bring some. I think it's great. Not. Yeah, it can be quite intimidating sometimes, like the the amount of talent that's in the community. Because you you kind of, I mean, I do it especially. I I think well, what you know, what am I bringing? What what do especially with like, um, so like the magazine, we just had a we well, submitted the article a couple of days ago for the, the latest edition. It's hard to know what to think about because there's always someone who kind of knows more about stuff than you do in the community. Um. So it's, it's kind of difficult to find your spot, I think, sometimes. But yeah, like, like you, said, you know, I'm just a, a bloke who doesn't really know anything or, or doesn't specialise in anything, apart from, like, doing donuts and stupid things. And that's not really any use to anyone. And I felt like that, too. You know, I, 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 wrote, I just wrote my article. I haven't, I'm, I'm running on CPT. I haven't turned mine in yet. I just finished today. Oh, well, it's due. You can't, you, can't be on, you can't be on black time. I know. I mean, they're going to get get in half a week late so um but you know you write it and i like i was like just reading over it and i'm like yeah but you know everybody knows this everybody's based like do i even need to? You know, but i think you just uh, and i stopped worrying about that 
um, when you get those little tinges or whatever, and just, you know, try to contribute in the mm -hmm. most way that you can. And I think that's what's so great about it, right? Like nobody's trying to be anything, mm -hmm. uh, trying to put on a front or, oh, you know, I got to be like this or be like that. Or it's just like people just bring whoever they are to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the community so strong because there's so many talented people and not just talented. I mean, ta talent's one thing, but, you know, talent where people are actually good as well and are here for the right reasons. And, um, and so many people have been here for such a long time. You know, most of the people that come in that are new too, um, that stick around and that last and are still around and everything are, you know, are your kind of people as well. Like, I mean, I see like Jack mm -hmm. Eve right there, like, they're, you know, fairly new in the grand scheme of things, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, the people that come in, it's so specific too, right? Um, it's easy to be driven away if you're just kind of like a TikTok truther and all of a mm -hmm. sudden you cross Owen. So uh, he, uh, he weeds the garden just uh, quite well and not just the bannings, but just uh, the actual content. Yeah, it seems to be a, a mix of, like you said, the like TikTok truthers or the ones who, I mean, you can tell them a mile off the, 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 the kind of hello fellow bears type of people where they, you know, they, they come in and they're everywhere for like a month and then explode. Yeah. Um, and I, you, I always wonder, like, have you, is this the first and only time you've done this or have you done this with like 15 other channels where you've like gone in, like made yourself at home straight away without even like being invited in and then just spent a month like hammering this one person before you realize that they don't love you well i think it's like you know it's it's the first time they can feel like home right like you're lost mm -hmm. in the world and, and you're all fucked up anyways if you're gonna act like that and you're into truth or shit and all of a sudden you get somewhere where somebody's finally speaking some truth and mm -hmm. there's community so you're like great but mm -hmm. then forgot that you're still a piece of shit, right? So you're still a piece of shit, even though you found a good community. And so you can't last very long and then you explode. And, you know, some of them come back and learn from it. But uh, mm -hmm. the ones that last are, uh, are meant to last. Yeah, like you said, that no one's trying to be the best. And it, if anything, it's the other way. I think people, or I think that the majority of bears would... would we're kind of almost trying to be too helpful, if you you know what I mean. We're trying to be too useful to the to the community. So it's not like we want we're doing it for reward or we're doing it for a pay rise or we're doing it to get noticed or whatever. It's like no, I I want to contribute, but I don't. Do you know what I mean I, I don't I don't want to be I don't want to be the one who's not contributing as much as everybody else. Um, which is a good thing to have. Do you know what I mean that's a, that's a very kind of good group to have? It's only going to get better and better and better then. for sure is everybody just uh yeah i think it's the la it's just the organic nature of it mm -hmm. and not just truth or shit like any anywhere where people just want a name for themselves or mm -hmm. or the, i, I got to be like this guy i got to try more like this and this is the specific thing and you know i think that's a uh, part of the bear names too right like have all these people that mm -hmm. are this is what i do this is what i'm into right and um and not every uh, bear name is like that but uh you know, you, you get into like your, this is what I'm about and this is my niche and you get to name yourself. So mm -hmm. being black and white. So that's how I got Polar Bear. That's a cool name. I think, I don't know if there's any cool names left because there's a lot of cool names out there. So I don't, I'm, I'm intrigued to to see what the next cool name is. I mean, you could just be like Joe Gagan and just not, and just not bother, but whatever. Joe Gagan was the original. He's been embarrassed yeah. since 22. I know he's Telecaster Bear, but he's too old to remember that. So he, he just goes by Joe. Telegraph Bear. Um, right, so any questions to come in the thing? Otherwise, I shall let you go. Um, there's still many good ones left. Thinks, thinks he's looking positive. He's, yeah. There's a lot yeah, of good A bit stupid. But Finks and, and Copper and you know, all the old hosts and people that have been a part of hanging with the bears are a big part of that too. I mean, this, this is a, a big part of the community where people can really step outside the streams and, and not just be, to be on the streams, but to find out what it's, you know, really about and what the people are about. 
and you know and highlights the wrong word but just get an experience for for who different people are and people can come on here and share and i've never been on a fucking live stream before before hanging with the bear mm -hmm. anything like that and i don't have a desire to go on one um mm -hmm because you know we're all friends and it's nice to get on here and just chop it up so mm -hmm. this has been great no, as well. i mean it's, it's gonna go to shit for the next two weeks because i'm not here to, to keep an eye on it yeah so things, things yeah. have probably try and run it into the ground and then you know but just hopefully the, there's something left for me to try and recover when i get back i think finks and copper will do the best to hold it up as they can while you're in uh greece in your speedo and fubu jeans you'll be fine yeah, but I mean, I don't think the best is is particularly very good. But, you know, I'm I'm hopeful. I, I believe in you, things. You can do it. I'll look at OG. That's the pop then. It has. Yeah, Callista knows. Ever since Callista left, it's gone to shit. I mean, let's be honest. Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but I mean, strength to strength is probably more accurate. But. Regardless. Um, right, cool. I shall let you go then because I've kept you long enough. I might, I need to, I definitely need to go and do some yoga. Have you ever, did you ever um, know, Ch uh, I always get his name wrong, Chad and Sana? He, he, used to, he was in the Bears for like quite a few years. Um, he's still, he's still around. He's still like, he's, he's just kind of not active particularly. Um, he's a, a Canadian, but he's a, a yoga like expert, he's, he's ridiculous, like the stuff he can do. Um, he can, he's one of them who can like lift himself up with one hand. And so, you know, when you put the hand under the center of him and then they like lift himself, he can do all that and he can like spin around and stuff. But he yeah. does, um, he started doing like, teaching you how to do things basically, uh, at various levels. Um, so I'll try and find him, his channel later and send it to you. Yeah, you, Joe, you remember um, Chizanzik? He used to be in our group chat when we were in the um, Mount Crushmore group chat. He was uh, Chizan, Chad, Chad and Sana was in there. And Calista, you were in there as well, so you should know. And you know a lot about um, for somebody who doesn't do yoga. No, he's a good. He's a good fella. He, he is, he's, he's a good guy. He was doing um, quite a few like like good anti-mask videos and stuff um, during Corona and stuff. But no, he's, he's a good lad. You know, I can barely still touch. I do it almost every day. I can barely touch my toes. So, when that's yeah, not it, he'll like he'll make you feel fat and old, like without without a doubt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you his channel. I'm assuming he's still got um, his channel up. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll mm -hmm. check. Uh, you enjoy your holiday. Thank you I very much. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I haven't been away for like. Last time was 2018. The last time I was away. You know, uh, um, I'll I'll check in with the government over here to see if uh, we can let you in next year. Yeah, if you could, please, because I was supposed to go in 2020. So if you if you could, we'll see what we can work out. Um, but I'm not bringing my yoga mat or a goat. I got one for Steve. you. Man up. All right, good time, Stunt. Thanks All for right, buddy. Me. All right, take care. Right, thanks everyone for turning up um i can only apologize for the next two weeks when you're gonna have to deal with the other two but um you know it'll just make you treasure me more when i come back so enjoy everybody uh no blonde hair blitz do you, I, I don't know is that still blonde it's like whitey white white color i don't know okay um have a great week everybody and i shall see you when i get back take care